Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the WR Podcast. I'm Joey. I'm Tommy. I'm Pops. And uh, we have some guests on the show yes. this week. Uh, we have AJ and Jesse. Yes. Uh, former OVW referees. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, glad to have you guys on. Yes, it's great Thanks. to be here. Thanks for having us. Oh, and yeah. don't forget, she's a former OVW women's champion, too. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Um, uh, did you um, uh, just ask you guys some questions here? Um, did sure. you guys grow up uh, watching wrestling? Yes. I did, yeah. And yeah, she did, too. <laughs> awesome. Uh, who were some of your uh, favorite wrestlers growing up? You go first. Uh, for me, it was probably Shawn Michaels. I mean, I grew up in South Texas. He's from San Antonio, Texas. That was, and then um, seeing that match, WrestleMania 12, him and Bret Hart, that was an amazing match. And I remember after, after I finished the beginner's class at OVW, I went back and watched that match over again. I just had a whole new appreciation for it. Um, Favorite wrestlers kind of changed over the years, but when I was little, I wanted to be Shawn Michaels. He was my hero. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't feel bad. I wanted to be like Hulk Hogan when I was a kid, so don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we all did too. <laughs> yeah. I was a little bit differently. I wanted to be Harley Race. <laughs> there you go. I heard a lot of good stories about Harley. I think one of my favorites was like if they went to a bar or something, um, at the pool table, there'd be stacks of quarters. He would just clear it out, put his quarters on, and be like, I got winner. Just, <laughs> nobody ever. So. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like to I like to hear all the stories. I, I, I watch I watch them on YouTube and, and and try to find as much as I can about you know what their what their life was outside the ring and everything. Uh, it's, I will it's, say. Just from my experience with wrestling, a lot of the more entertaining stuff happened in the locker room or on the road, like outside of the ring. But that's a story for later. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Jesse, uh, who were some of your uh, favorite wrestlers? Well, I actually, you know, as I got older and everything, they always changed um, based on the stories and everything. But the main ones I always followed were like Triple H and China, but my favorite one to watch wrestling was Trish Stratus. Um, I always want, <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to be that blondie um, that got all the boys' attention and everything. But be careful with blondie. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so but I loved following all of the Attitude Era stuff, um, all of all of that, The Rock. Um, watching him, um, uh, um, Undertaker. Oh yeah, he scared me though. I was scared of Undertaker. <laughs> yeah, when I was oh. little, he, he scared me too. When I was little. Oh um, yeah, yeah. When oh, being six, five, six, seven years old, and when you seen that, you could see the fear in the kids' eyes in the arenas. Yeah, when, yeah. So he walked out. I think he actually went on record saying like he felt bad at early in his career because little kids would start crying when he oh, entered. Yeah. And it was like, I believe it. I was I was scared of him too when I was little. So, surprisingly <laughs> enough, I loved watching Kane. Oh yeah. His brother. Uh yeah. <laughs> his his brother. <laughs> Do y'all remember when Kane made that debut? It was oh. a bad blood and he ripped the the door off the hinges. It was like, yeah. dude. That, oh yeah, that, that was great. That's great a memorable event. moment. That, yeah, that was a perfect way to debut his uh, the Undertaker's brother at that time. Yes. Yeah, I remember that too. And then uh, I don't know if y'all agree, but it, that's the thing about wrestling now. You don't see an impactful debut that much anymore. You no. don't. Do you see like the grandiose entrances on? Like when Styles made his debut, his debut yeah. to WWE, all he did was come through on a big uh, pay-per-view thing, and that was mm -hmm. it. Well, he didn't actually do anything significant to be remembered yeah. for WWE. I know he had his career, um, his long career, and he was had his fame before that, but given that you're going yeah. to a new place like that, you would think they would have given him a 
a big entrance. The one thing about Styles' debut that I like, though, is at least for me, it was a complete surprise. I didn't know that he signed. I wasn't. I jumped off the couch when I saw that. It, um, but I think the internet a at lot that of it. Time, it fit perfectly because Roman Reigns was only in the ring, and you could see the shock in his face. Yeah, that too. But I think as far as like surprise debuts and stuff like that, the internet's kind of done a lot of damage. Like, oh, rumors so and so signed and expected to debut this week, this month, whatever. Yep. You know, yeah, uh, it's um, it's changed over the years. Some of it not for the best, I think. Oh, absolutely. I think that uh, I mean, just just my opinion, you know. But I, I think the internet has ruined a lot of things about wrestling for me. Uh, you know, it's it, 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 it's they 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 just fed so much stuff into it, you know, and they just should have just left it alone and let people believe what they wanted to. Yeah, I didn't even have so much of a problem as it being like predetermined. I'm yeah. not going to call it fake, but I didn't even have a problem with predetermined. It was just like. There was a thing I saw the other day where if we had the Attitude Era today, people would complain that Stone Cold is being shoved down our throats oh, or yeah. they're really pushing this guy. And it's like just back in our day during Attitude Era and all the good times, it was like if you didn't like the episode that week, who cares? You just watch next week's because, you know, it was gonna be different. keep following along. Yeah. You never know what's yeah. going to happen. <laughs> but now it's like spoilers and everybody's talking online and it's <laughs> it's different now. Yeah, yeah, but you, you know, it's a, to me, it was it's a lot different than the era that I started watching. I, I started watching it back the, the, the late part of the 60s on through the 70s, and it, it wrestling has changed just so much just in just in that era. Uh, yeah. and you know, it, it it was it was me just just being excited, just 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 you know, just on my edge on the, on the edge of my seat, just watching who's going to win this match. Because some of it was just so tense. Yep. You didn't need all the high flying, yeah, extravagant tricks. You just needed yes, to slap someone's chest and mm -hmm. it, it told the story. Nowadays, they have to do all this fancy stuff that isn't really needed. It's not necessary. It's yeah. like gymnastics with wrestling tights. Yeah. And wrestling yeah. Gear. Like, it's let like... me see who can do the biggest move or the most impressive flip in the air. Mm -hmm. And do a no show right after yeah. that, and no sell. Oh yeah, no sell. Sorry, um, right I couldn't that. agree anymore. I, that, I couldn't agree anymore with you. That's the point that we've been trying to say yeah. for so long, and people's like, "Well, well, you guys haven't been in the business. You don't know what you're talking about." I'm like, "Okay, but, but it's yeah. true. That's all you see is flip flop and and no sales or or botches fifty million times or." Mm -hmm. Like yep. you got, you got to work on your craft a little bit. Like, like you can't just go out there and say, "Oh, our, and I know people make mistakes in the ring. It happens." Yeah. yeah. But, but at least don't, don't get mad because we're calling you out on your botches. Like, like just, just own up to it. And say, "Yeah, I made a mistake. That mistakes happen." You know. But don't mm -hmm. get all mad because you got mad because you got a botch. Everyone makes mistakes. Yeah. Even in legit fighting, like punches get botched all the time yeah. and they just keep punching and swinging yeah. until their opponent goes down yeah so it yeah. Even makes it even more realistic to have a couple of botches every now and then not yeah. these perfect perfect acrobatic moves mm -hmm. so. and, and it's like it feels like okay i played a video game maybe i could try that in real life and in, in, in the ring so yeah. you yeah. can't do that yeah it makes no sense you can't do that did y'all have a favorite wrestling video game? Oh, hands down, WWF No Mercy. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. That and WrestleMania 2000, they were pretty similar, but yeah. My uh, favorite thing in, when I would play in middle school, like I would run with the trash can, just knock the guy over, go back, <laughs> run at him again, knock him over. And he did like the backflip or whatever it was. Um, Let's not forget Revenge, though. <laughs> yeah, WCWNWO Revenge, another good one. That was love good it. one. Uh, and love that game. Been plenty of bad video games too of wrestling. Oh goodness, yeah. <laughs> a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't as good as like the other the three that we just talked about, but um, WWF Warzone I thought was fun. Mm -hmm. 
just because yeah. the TV was one of the weapons you can use yeah. and breaking yeah. it over the guy's head. That's, <laughs> like, that's that's good, like, that is a good one, too. Yes, it is. A lot of people was like, man, Warzone stunk. I was like, what are you talking about? It's it's more playable than some of the games. Like, it was fun, and it had good graphics, but like the WCW games, the controls, and being yeah. able to, to do that, that was separated it. If Warzone had the controls as Revenge or No Mercy, man, it would have been ten times better. But oh. it was still fun. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> so, uh, when um, growing up, wrestling fans, uh, did you actually want to be uh, professional wrestlers? Um, I I think there was a couple of times I did have a dream to do it, but my my main career focus since I was five has always been with animals. <laughs> I've always loved animals. So that, that was mine. I don't know about yours. <laughs> I think for me, again, it goes back to Shawn Michaels and the boyhood dream and that story. And I thought to myself, well, if Shawn can do it, I can do it. And that was always in the back of my head. Um, and, when, but the few times I talked to my family about it when I, when we were younger, they were always like, no, that's stupid. Don't throw your life away as a wrestler. It's not, it's not a good idea, blah, blah, blah. And then it wasn't until maybe my sophomore year of university, I was pretty much realizing I didn't have a future playing baseball, but I lived in the gym at the time. Like I was there. It was a highlight of my day to go. And I started watching wrestling just randomly. I was channel surfing and I caught the end of SmackDown. Me and some friends were hanging out and it was, I think, 07 John Cena and Randy Orton had a really hot feud at the time. Oh. Like, yeah. I think there was a spot where Orton beat up Cena's dad and Cena like escaped and tried to get to him and Orton escaped at the last second. And that stare down as they closed the show, I was like, holy cow, like that was intense. And I was talking to my friends about it and it was like this is actually pretty cool watching it still and it just it never left my mind i kept going to the gym and <laughs> i ended up deciding like this is what i want to do i made the mistake of telling my mom that and she did not talk to me for three days oh, so nice. and then what also didn't help was that was right around the time of the chris benoit incident yeah yeah, oh, yeah. So it's kind of but it took a while to get her on board. I had to make a deal with her in school. So I finished a little bit more of my schooling before I was able to get in the ring. And a few, a year or two after that, I ended up at OVW. <laughs> yep. And like, um, uh, you know, uh, especially around that time, that would have been tough, uh, especially with your mom. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, you see this uh, world renowned wrestler do, do this horrible, uh, thing and uh yeah i'm i'm pretty sure that was tough to do for sure yeah uh, she well the funny thing my yeah she did not talk to me for three days my stepdad was a huge wrestling fan he was over the moon he was excited he thought it was the coolest thing ever so it was like well dad thinks it's the coolest thing mom is not talking to me right now <laughs> I think I, I think that's cool. I, th I think that's outstanding. You you followed your dream when I was when I was uh, uh, twelve years old. Uh, I like I said, I watched wrestling the biggest part of my life, and and I, when I, I lived in in Indiana when I was twelve years old, uh, we we only got uh, about three channels on on the black and white TV that that we had, and and wrestling used to come on from Indianapolis. It, it was the era that Dick the Bruiser had, and I. I, I I told my mom one time. I said, "Mom, I'm going to be a professional wrestler. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to wear, I'm going to beat Dick the Bruiser and wear his belt." <laughs> How did that go? <laughs> it didn't go, man. It didn't go. <laughs> Directions changed, man. It's, it was, it, uh, but but I am I am so glad, man, that you followed your dream, man. Something that kind of surprised me, too, is after I walked away from wrestling, I think it was 2018 when we moved down to Texas, um, I would I was kind of trying to figure out the next step in my life. And I would talk to different friends and whatnot. And 
almost everyone I talked to, they were like, yeah, dude, I was following along with your wrestling that you were posting. That was so cool. You actually did that. And I was like, wow, I didn't even know you were watching. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. as you know, we've been, we watched Ohio Battle Wrestling since it started in 98. So, wow. yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah, we watched it the entire time. So, so we watched all through the time. We still keep an eye on it because it's, because you know it's here in Kentucky, so it's it's not as good as what it used to be, but they're trying. I got yeah, it seems right like they've got a good thing going right now too. I think they started touring. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of cool. So they're doing some pretty good things, and and that's the good thing. Like yeah, we've been watching OVW since '98. So did you all go to the live events in E Town at the church? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that every time you do it? Huh? Say it again. The one where I got body slammed. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 One of our friends was there. Or Shania, she was a wrestler. Scarlet, she was still in the beginners class, but she was in the crowd. She didn't know what was going to happen, but she said she'd laughed so hard, like that spot that we did where I'm trying to calm the guy down, then he picks me up and slams me too. <laughs> I wanted to see the tape. I don't think I ever got to, but I heard the crowd laugh. They ate that up. Uh, yeah, like uh, like like every time that uh, OVW uh, come to E Town, we tried to go uh, almost every time. And uh, yeah, I, yeah I, I remember when I remember when when the, when the guy body slammed you. I'm, I I I got so excited. I said, I said, he's the referee, man. You're the referee. Disqualify him. <laughs> And then that had one of the funniest finishes where they kept switching the pin back and forth, and then he outsmarted the other guy like, hey, yeah. stupid. <laughs> he yeah. still switched it back, and it was like, okay. So I just counted the pin, and then, <laughs> and then he was like, wait, we lost? <laughs> it was, I mean, you, 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 you know, you guys do, do such a good job in there and everything, and, and, and you, 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 you know, it, it being – both of you was once a uh, both of his referees right at, yeah. back yeah. then right too uh did, did it did you ever eat the I'm, I'm asking both of you the same question did every did sometimes you took a bump did it did, and sometimes it, it it actually hurt you <laughs> <laughs> did you ever take a bump as a ref yeah i took a couple oh, okay um as a ref the bumps didn't really hurt um, there was a lot of funny ones, which like with Zoe, remember that one where I was in between us, like, he was oh, supposed yeah. to give me a bomb and yeah, uh, he was supposed to power bomb or it looked and it, for a split second. I thought he was actually going to, but the other refs, we all swarmed him and stopped him. But no, the bumps I took as a ref didn't hurt. Um, as a wrestler, there were a couple that I've I blacked out for a minute or two, um, not realizing that I blacked out for a minute or two. <laughs> there was, I think it was in E Town. There was one time I took a choke slam and I leaned a little too far back and I landed, I guess, on my head more than my shoulders. I actually had a few fans text me that night, but I was fine. Um, I had stop one match. Sign. Yeah, I got hit in the head with a stop sign. I don't know if y'all remember that at OVW. Oh. Yeah, um, Dapper Dan and Pondo. Oh, yeah. Dapper Dan, <laughs> um, he was funny. <laughs> I got hit with a steel chair. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, spear tackled. That actually didn't hurt as bad as I thought it would, but I made sure to go to the bathroom before the match. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um. And then I, I got hit with a yeah the steel chair the kendo stick I think I took that one in E Town, which that actually hurt me a little more than I thought it would. Um, I got banged up a little bit yeah. And You're a horrible ref if you let all that shit happen. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, maybe it was, should have been me giving you pointers. <laughs> um, we there was one that was funny where uh, there was a battle royal I think it was a show it was like a house show in Louisville. And Big John had won the Battle Royal, so I got in the ring to raise his hand and whatnot. Well, as soon as I get in the ring, he picks me up. He throws me over the top rope, too. 
And I didn't know he was going to do that. It was funny. But when I landed, my feet slipped and I banged my knee on the ground. And I was like, oh, oh man. But I mean, it was funny. It was worth it. Um, yeah, I got banged up a bit. And my mom wasn't too happy about that. <laughs> um, when you... Um... <clears throat> When you uh, when you went to OVW to uh, to be trained, um, who trained you? Matt Capitelli, yeah, for both of us. Matt Capitelli. He Matt Capitelli, a great guy, by the way. Yeah, he yeah. Started this. There was he was amazing. Guy. I don't think there's ever going to be a better person to learn no. the basics from and to get introduced to wrestling than Matt. Was, he was. That was one of the very first things he said in our class. He showed up like 10 minutes late, by the way, to my first class. <laughs> um, but that was the very first thing he said to our my class as one of the bigger classes that he had um, is that, that he was there to teach us how to be safe. <laughs> Above anything else, that was the most important thing. And if at all we were hurt in any way, shape, or form, um, to let him know so he can do it ever he could in his power. Cool. So that, that was, I and then I went awesome. ahead and hurt him. <laughs> yeah. <that. laughs> so he was teaching us how to lock up, and then, um, <laughs> and uh, he's like, you, you like go soft on the back of the neck and stuff, you know. I smacked him. So, <laughs> he's like, and he, he tried to tie up. And the first word he said was like, he looked at, he's like, ow. I'm like, shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that's the thing. Matt Capitelli was a great guy. He was. And, 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 and he was in OVW when he was teaming with Johnny Jeter in 2003 oh. as the Thrill Seekers. I thought that was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when he showed, when he, yeah. I felt bad for him. What happened to him and tough enough? I thought that was horrible. Yeah. And and everything. I was like, he's he's a great guy. He is. And I enjoyed every time I seen him in OVW. And when he teamed with John Morrison in two thousand three, as tough enough. That was the that was their team name. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, he was great in the ring too. Like very we, good. Yeah. We were especially bothered, or we were. It, it hit us pretty hard when he passed. Um, yeah. I think I actually took off work that weekend because we went up to Austin. We just, we took a little vacation just to get away from everything. And yeah. and then we were at a brewery and we were just telling stories about him back and forth. Yeah. He was an awesome guy. Um, he was. I remember my experience, my first day of wrestling training, I thought I shouldn't eat breakfast before training because then I'm going to throw up. So mm -hmm. Being the genius I am, I drank a Red Bull instead. <laughs> the first few minutes, I was already starting to feel sick. And then when we started running the ropes, I just bolted out of the ring straight to the bathroom. Just, <laughs> I actually threw up twice. And Matt was like, you didn't think to eat breakfast this morning? And I was like, no. <laughs> was like, Why? I was like, because I thought this was going to happen. <laughs> and he just <laughs> shook his head like... <laughs> so... I never, I never skipped breakfast before training after that, and I never had Red Bull before I got in the ring either. Yeah. <laughs> that you was learned a, your lesson. <laughs> that was a running joke between me and him the rest of the time that I was there. I was like, yeah, I didn't have any Red Bull this time. <laughs> if uh, if our, if my son gets in the ring, I'm going to make sure he doesn't have any Red Bull before that either. <laughs> Um, and, and and while you guys were uh, in OVW training, you also trained as wrestlers as well? Yeah. Um, I had a showcase match, just the only match I ever had. It was against Dapper. I got beat up pretty good, but, I mean, I feel like I did okay. My uh, The guys that I trained with said I did well, and they liked my match. So um, I have some pictures on Facebook. I think I posted some of them. But shortly after that, I got told by some people in the back that if I wanted a WWE job, which was my goal, that I probably had a more realistic realistic shot as a ref than a wrestler. And it was like, well, I thought about it, but I got a lot more ring time as a ref, and I felt like I did well enough. So I got I had my stories, I had my fun, and she actually had one of the best beginner showcase matches that. I got to call. That was a fun match. And Danny actually told me um, 
that we did an amazing job, me and Hana, on our on my debut match. And Matt actually pulled me aside after. Actually, he came out to my parents who were there and told me in front of them that I should continue and keep going um, because we did such a great job with it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I think we kind of already liked each other at that point, too. Like, we would see yeah. each other at the shows, and we would kind of smile at each other and whatnot. So I was excited when I saw I had her match. And I remember um, there was a spot I legit broke out laughing. She disappeared under the ring for a minute. And Hana was looking for, and Hana's bending over through the ropes. Jess comes out from the other side and freaking smacks her right on the butt. <laughs> the, the impact. I was like, dude. Like, I had to cover my mouth and my face, but I was like, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so, really it's that good, ball. you know, that you have like matches. It. That, that that you guys can make fun. I mean, it's it, it, it's a fun kind of a kind of thing to do to have matches that you can be fun with. Oh yeah, yes. there were some matches. It didn't even feel like I was working. We were just having fun out there. Yeah. Um, those were some of the best times. There was one. I don't remember who all was there. I think it was Big John and Ryan against Devin Driscoll and uh, Rocco. Mm -hmm. it, Rocco that might have been. Yeah, but. All four of those guys are amazing. I loved working with all of them, but it just felt like I was out there for a few minutes. Next thing I know, we're back in the locker room. Like that was a blast. That was fun. <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't want to go home and go to bed. My adrenaline was amped. And <laughs> even telling that story, still, I feel that was fun. Um, Randy Royal and Shane were really cool. They were fun yes. to work with. I remember Randy Royal all the way till 1999, and I'm like, it's. Oh. Because we watched OVW like all the way to 98. And when I saw him like in 2000, I think it was 2008, 2009. And I'm like, he has gotten great. Like, yeah, he's very underrated. And, oh, yeah. And, he could work with anybody. Yes. And, and I'm like, this guy should be signed somewhere because he is a great talent. So I was like, and, and same thing with, uh, uh y'all remember Johnny Spade, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what a, what a great guy he is too. Like another great talent. Like there was so much good talent in OVW that goes underappreciated. And yeah. speak of that, that's why actually we'll, we'll do a plug. No, you want to do the plug. Okay. We're doing we're doing an OVW uh wrestling podcast, the television from 1999 all the way till 2008. And oh, wow. Yeah, and uh we're doing that. So we've awesome. been watching all the past OVWs and Going all the way till the dying days, as unfortunately <laughs> till WWE moved out on, but but we're going all through there. So we're we doing that. we made every match that uh, uh, try to make every match here in yeah. here here in Elizabeth Town. We try to make every match. They they, they had it in Hodgesville. We we'd even go there to see it. It was so great. Yeah, like we like any time OVW was in the air, we made sure to go. Hell yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> we just love wrestling man we just love yeah. it um do y'all have a favorite ovw match yes actually i do it was in 2007 actually which it one was here it was here in e-town it was a uh, cody it was an ovw championship match it was cody rhodes who was tony runnels at the time as he took on paul Burchill for the ovw championship oh wow yeah and actually it, you know, usually at live events, as you know, AJ and Jess, usually you never see no title slip. Yeah. House, no. Right? Well, no. Cody Rhodes won the OVW championship there, which was a big moment. <laughs> so, and I always remember that. And that was like my favorite moment. That must have been magic. It's a really That's good awesome. match. Yeah. And, and Paul Burchill is another under. Yeah, he was, uh, he, he, you know, he he was he, he was way underrated, uh, it, it, which which is a shame. Man, um, I guess mine was Cody Rhodes and Sean Spears versus Deuce and Domino. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. the, uh, Deuce and Domino. I remember those guys for the uh, Southern uh, for the OVW Southern Tag Team Championship. Oh yeah, they put on great matches too. And 
awesome. and, and, and another one, uh, I think this was in 2005, and I've watched OVW ever since. Like, it was, uh, you all remember Brett Albright, who was Gunner Scott. Yeah, yeah. Yes. He was Gunner Scott in WWE. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> him and CM Punk put on, they put on a great feud, like in 2005. And it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, when you, uh, were you in Kentucky when you, uh, wanted to go to OVW for training? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What was the question? Did we live in Kentucky? Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, like, uh, before you, like, uh, how'd you know about OVW? Did you guys internet? Oh, um, I lived out in Las Vegas, um, and I had actually auditioned for a Tough Enough and didn't even get the cut. Um, but my roommate at the time, because um, <laughs> I was researching different schools and I was about to go out to Florida. And he's like, no, check out OVW. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you would find that funny, girly. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and so that's, I shot Matt an email. Um I didn't even realize it was to Matt until after the fact, I think, or something. And then he responded. And then, um, yeah, I did, made the decision within a month <laughs> that I was going to go to OVW and moved out, temporarily moved out to Kentucky. Um, and then after my debut match, um, I permanently made the transition from Las Vegas to uh, to Kentucky. So you were in Bowling Green. Yep, I was in Bowling Green um, at that time. So <laughs> and I remember for me it started. I I think it was the week before uh, WrestleMania 27. There was that article on Yahoo where they talked about the history of OVW, the Harvard of Pro mm-hmm. Wrestling. Yeah. That was where I first heard about it. And then it talked about Rip Rogers and everybody that they trained. Mm-hmm. And at the time I knew I wanted to get into wrestling. I just didn't know where i wanted to go but i had a feeling it wasn't going to be san antonio i wanted to go somewhere somewhere different and by the time i read that article i was like i'm gonna go there i'm gonna go there one day i don't know how or when but it'll happen and about two years later i was there finally so yeah that one article changed my life (laughs) oh yeah i actually remember that article yes yeah Uh, and that's the thing like people's like and then some people's like well OVW, who did they train? I was like, dude, do you know all these guys? They they trained John Cena, Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton. Like and, they and, got, and uh, especially being from around here, we got yeah. to see these guys. Yeah, we got to see these guys, but way before they went to uh, to WWE. And and all these guys even admitted they even said if it wasn't for OVW, we wouldn't be where we are today. Yeah, and they even said that. And and they owe they. They love Danny Davis because he he's a great trainer too. By the way, Danny Davis, what a yeah. what a great guy he is. Yeah, Danny Rip. I still think Matt was great to learn from. Like that was amazing. That it was, was it was a great time to be at OVW. Yeah, and one of the things I remember when I was in the beginners class was I would stick around and watch the advanced class go through the drills and whatever they were doing. I don't remember who was in the ring, but they did a spot, and Rip just got onto them said it looked like crap that was the he had some language for it yeah yeah he he gave them some pointers like do this don't do that do this don't do that in a nice way (laughs) in his own way and in my head i'm like that i don't think that's going to make that big a difference what's the big deal but they went over the same spot and they did it with his advice and everything just looked so much more crisp and believable i was like wow this guy knows He's on top of his on top of his game. Yeah. Like a lot of that, people, like Rip that told Rogers, me I went to the right and, place. And see, that's the problem. People's like Rip Rogers, he was a jobber. I was like, dude, he's very knowledgeable. That's a he veteran. Is a guy you can like, he is very knowledgeable. Yeah. yeah. Like, it <laughs> because of him, well, not solely because of him, but I can't watch wrestling any more the same because of everything I learned from him mm-hmm. and I can predict how matches are going to turn out and it's like <laughs> I, some of them I'll ruin for him um, there's a few that I get surprised by but 
is very few and far between and i'll even call it out like we'll make fun of it but, now almost because like we can see where it's going yeah, and it's because of rip like mm -hmm. i was able to do a lot of that there was a funny story though when we were living in kentucky <laughs> we were watching a pay-per-view i don't remember the match of the event but she was calling stuff right before it happened and she's complaining she about annoyed. it <laughs> i got annoyed like and i'd had a little bit to drink at that point it was a wrestlemania yeah. wrestlemania really yeah it wasn't it wasn't the it was after we had met um no because we were living it together at the time yeah, it was the but WrestleMania kept, after that. She kept calling these spots and ruining everything because I'm just watching and drinking and having fun and relaxing. But she starts complaining about it, like about the match and about stuff that they're doing. Yeah. It was to the point that I had to shove beer in her face, drink this, and stop talking. <laughs> like, well, it wasn't a WrestleMania, but it was another big pay-per-view. It was like, just drink this and stop talking. Yeah. When you finish it, I'll get you another one. Just It, God, it was stop. so bad. I don't know. That, I think it was her that texted Rip about that, and he just started laughing. But and see, that's the thing. Like we've been saying, it's like, and how some of these young guys don't want to learn from veteran guys. That's what they're there for. Like yeah. to show you, hey, why you don't want to? Why you don't want to listen to a veteran that actually's done this for a long period of time and yeah. and is very knowledgeable? He's made money. Like he knows how to do this. Like. Like, yes. and, and it bothers me how some young guys are. Well, I know everything. That, I, know I saw that. I saw that more so at OVW than other shows that I did. Um, at other shows, like when the veterans spoke, you listened. You sat there and listened, unless you were outperforming. And even still, like there was a couple of times I was sitting there listening to one, and they had to shove me up out the curtain to to go to the match i was like no let me listen further <laughs> before it was like maybe six months or a year before i got into into the business the advice that i kept getting told repeatedly was keep your eyes and ears open and keep your mouth shut bingo yeah. around the veterans and i'm like yep. um, rogers uh he he come from seymour indiana and yep. and that's where i come from my wife and him went to school together. Oh, no. Nice. Sorry. Yeah. And, 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 and when we was in Indiana, and, and, and we when we come down come down here, he he would he would give us tickets to to to, to go to the show because he 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 been around the kids, everything like that right there, and and he would say, look, take the tickets, and, and enjoy them. And, and he gave us tickets at, at, at every event that, that he was at in Indiana and down here too. Oh, that's cool. Oh, nice. <laughs> it was, I mean, I mean, it was it was just so amazing and, and everything. You know, uh, it, it really was. And I and the kids, oh my God, they they they, they got loved to see more of the nicer Rip Rogers than you guys probably got to see. <laughs> <laughs> but I think. Yeah, I remember the first time I got yelled at. We were doing a spot where, like, I have a guy in the headlock and I'm going against the ropes. I made the mistake of breaking that hold so I could grab the top rope. And next thing I know, I hear, ah! and then I was like, what, 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 what? <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> don't <laughs> Oh, God. They, they did a match. He, he, he was in a match with, a, 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 in, in, in a high school in Seymour. And, and they brought, he brought Cactus Jack in. Oh, wow. And, and uh, you know, you know, when Cactus Jack, you know, at the end of his match, he'd do that bang bang oh, thing. He, he'd bring people in, and Rip Rogers told them, said, "Look, I got two little kids out there that 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 has heard about you, l l loves you, and everything." Said, "I want you to pick those two little kids for me uh, to come up in, in the ring with you and do the bang bang thing with you." And and, and w w me and my wife, we, we we didn't know anything about it, and uh, until after it was all over with, and uh, 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 Captain Jack won his match. He said, "I'm I'm looking for two little boys if I can come up here and 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 celebrate this match with me." And, and he said, "He's looking around. He always said, hey, how about you two little boys? If I can come up here 
be, because Rip told them what they were dressed like and what seats they were in. And, and, and that was us. <laughs> yeah, that was me. He did that for us. And, and he told my mom about my mom knew my mom knew about it at the time. But she did tell us we were little, you know, you you, you want to surprise them and and then when Cactus picked us out, we went up there. He goes, I want y'all to do the bang, bang, and we'll take a picture. And that's what we did. And we still got that picture to this very day. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, it, 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 you know, it, this so many years later, I, I, I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like a, a gold medal to them. I, I mean, because when you're they, little, they, they, yeah, they protect that picture no matter what. <laughs> when you're little, like, I know for me, wrestling, it felt like real life superheroes. Mm -hmm. Like Shawn Michaels was the hero trying to take down Vader or Sid or whoever he was fighting. At least until he turned heel. Then when he turned heel, God, I hated him. <laughs> but <laughs> um, yeah, like, man, as a kid, that would have been awesome. That's so cool that y'all got to experience that. It, and, and that's the thing. And, and for example, you know, that's what we do as you do with your son. Like he takes him to wrestling matches. To make a big moment out of it. we brought him to OVW all the time and 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 everything and, and it helps it gives kids something to remember and that's the good thing about it. we had a couple stories i remember we got a picture we took z to big b yeah. and we got a picture of him on the ring apron so we he was in the ring before he could walk <laughs> but he's not allowed to be a wrestler i don't think no, he's not. <laughs> he's not allowed <laughs> and then we had enough we had a show i was working with white river wrestling up in indianapolis or fishers indiana and z was still a baby at the time and she was sitting right right there ringside and there was a spot where i got squashed in the corner and z had just woken up from a nap and he saw me take the hit and i fell over and then he started crying Aww. and i was like yeah. <laughs> oh but, man that's <laughs> That was a oh, fun trip. Man. That whole crew, that White River crew is awesome. Yes. Like they were they were very welcoming, very friendly. Yes. And Z and Jess were just as part of the family as I was. It was it was great. Oh, that's uh, right. So uh um did you enjoy your time with OVW? Yeah, I did. I made a lot of memories. Um I mean, obviously yeah. that's how I met Jess. Yeah. And <laughs> that was I think a lot of people saw us happening before we actually got together um and then one of my favorites was working with rob conway i oh. remember i called my little brother after that show because i was excited he was like dude conway that's awesome Mankind showing up. yeah mick foley showed up at one of the shows that was really cool um he was one of my other childhood favorites i remember uh elijah burke when he was teaming with marcus anthony oh i remember going to that show we we saw elijah at a different oh. show we were at a um, show in, um, it was the Jeff Hardy show, I think. Yeah, Jeff Hardy's Like show. Cooksville, Tennessee or something like that. And, and Elijah was there and he saw us. And instead of, you know, getting money and sending autographs and selling his merchandise and stuff, he actually pulled us up and just chatted with us the entire the intermission. Whole intermission. He, was, he lit up when he saw us. Yeah. I was hoping he was just going to recognize us, but he lit up and he was like, hey, yeah, come over just here. wanted to go say hi. And he was just like all chat. He I was, was like, the coolest. Awesome. He was really yeah, cool. Like, I, remember, uh, I remember Elijah Burke when he showed up in OVW and mm -hmm. he was great. Like very underrated talent too, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was amazing. Like, like when I see, when I finally seen him make it to the WWE and ECW, I was like, that's great. I've, I'm happy for him. He deserved it. Like yeah. he earned that spot. He was a real good guy. And then and, seeing and Rob, that and, and Rob Conway. Oh my goodness. I know a lot about Rob. Like, yeah, I remember in 99, like him and OVW and, and becoming an OVW champion and, 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 and oh. teaming with Nick Densmore, you know, uh, we were at the yeah. E-Town show when he was with, uh, Sylvain Grandier. As long as it's not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he actually got his nose broken here. Yeah. And yeah, it just popped right his and, nose and just started bleeding. And I was like, And he wow. talked about that story. I was like, I remember that. Because <laughs> we remember because we <laughs> yeah, were there yeah, live he, watching it. It was he was just it, I mean he it was just so so awesome man because, because he 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 hit it hit the turnbuckle, the, the 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 metal part of the turnbuckle, man. It broke his nose. I'm like, God, dude. 
I remember when I was trying to figure out some of the next steps in my career. Um, after working with Conway, we switched, we swapped contact information, and he would I would talk to him on the phone every now and then. There was one time I was actually late for work because we were on the phone, but I didn't want to end the conversation yet. So I'm in the parking lot talking to him, and it was like he was so helpful. He gave me such good advice, and he was very, very supportive, like more than some of my own friends and family were at the time. But um, I went into work. I was maybe 15 minutes late. My boss is already mad at me, but I was too happy. I didn't care. I was like, "I'm do- I- wrestling's my thing. I don't care. <laughs> like, be mad. <laughs> no one's high right now. I got- <laughs> and we remembered you all, like, instantly in OVW. Like, I would see you guys all the time here in E-Town. All the time. Because <laughs> y'all would always be there. I got stopped a couple times at work. Like, hey, are you with OVW? And I was like, yeah. Like. But the thing that I remember the most was people would be like, yeah, you're my son's favorite ref because you always get beat up in the main events. I'm like, thanks. It's good to have friends. I do got a, a question for you guys. What is your favorite, if you had to choose between the both of you guys, what was your favorite all-time OVW moment for the both of you? I almost really wanted to doubt. I remember, yeah, her winning the belt was good, like a moment for both of us together. Oh, together? Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There was a spot where I think it was at Big Zoe's spot when you were about to Being get power carried home. out. Or what? In the crowd. Oh. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. There so, was that match against Jesse Bell? Yeah, I was up against Jesse Bell and. Uh, she kicked my butt really bad, put me in a, a, a her. Like you were on her back and she yeah, had she, you. I, mean, I forget what the move was, but, uh, and he had to carry me out. This was before we started dating and everything. And the entire crowd was just like cat calling and whistling. And I think it, somebody shouted, get a room or something. Somebody like shouted, that. get a room, you two. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, I was, I was dying laughing because of that. And that was, that was one of my favorite moments in the ring with them. Or um, yeah, yeah, that was also the match where I was counting like quick pins when she had Jesse pinned. Yeah, <laughs> Jesse Bell had her pinned. I was like, wait, let me check her shoulders. Hold oh. on, like really taking my time. One. Yeah. Too and <laughs> I laid down for those <laughs> those long breaks too. I took it, man. Yeah. And I remember Jesse Bell. She was a great talent too. Like amazing. She, talent. she deserves all the success that she yeah. can get because she is very much professional and very good at what she does. So. Yeah. But you know, I, I I think I think you know the the rafters and the referees. You know they you know they. They, they just go hand in hand with, with, with the rafters, you know, be, yep. because they, you know, they, from my, from my viewpoint, you know, you, you, be, being the referee, you know, and being the wrestler, you, you got to look out for one another in the ring. Make, yeah. make sure, you know, well, you know, you can't do that right there because th- th- then you're, you're going to get hurt. I remember also like passing messages back and forth between the wrestlers if something went wrong or if something changed. <laughs> Yeah, but somebody got hurt. Like that is the thing. Think, like, some people that, don't I think know. That is so wonderful. I don't know that you guys I'm care that much about it. each other. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if y'all agree. Some people, some wrestling fans, don't know how important a referee very is. They like, don't. Like they really don't. Yeah. They think all it is is you just count one, two, mm-hmm. three. I'm like, yeah. there's so much well, more to it. But. Given some of the refs, not a all, because. Um, we know a couple of the refs still, but given some of the refs that they have on like AEW, WWE, and all that, I can see why because they aren't giving into the program, and that's where most of the selling occurs is with the ref. And um, that's one of the very first things as a ref I was taught was you determine how the crowd reacts. Like if you make it like, oh my god, it's it's big deal. They're gonna think it's a big deal if you are just standing there, like, yeah, whatever. They're not gonna react at all. Yeah, and so- yeah, but, well, well, that's the thing we 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 try to explain to people that that that, and then and and then we get we get the back feet like you people don't know what you're talking about. 
Yeah, no, it's it's the entire like look. There was, for instance, the big Zoe thing. Like, if if I just like was just down there, like yeah, whatever. So I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, I'm gonna die. Really think there's a reason to have fifty refs around trying to help me when I'm not like in panic mode. There's there's no reason to like you know what I mean. Like it tells yeah. a different story. Oh, absolutely. One absolutely. of the things that I always tried to do whenever there was a big slam onto the canvas, I would always jump to kind of like, whoa, holy cow. Yeah. And I would always see you jump, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. No wonder you got hit all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, um, I know you all, do you all still watch wrestling? Like A little bit. Every now as, and then. Not as much yeah. as we used to. Rip ruined it. <laughs> Have you all... <laughs> If y'all keep in contact, with, have you seen some of the referees? They just some of them are just not in. Like sometimes they're not invested, or, or yeah. not we were invested. talking about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're just like, oh, am I am I supposed to? Where am I supposed to? Like they don't even know how to ref properly. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, why are you even in this ring? Yes, yes, like yeah. especially if it's a ref a referee. Of course, there's referees that's not that experienced, but. But you gotta learn, like, and, and there's definitely more experienced refs out there that they could have hired. It's like you're obviously hired this person because yeah. they either gave you something or mm -hmm. or there there wasn't anybody prettier, pretty much, to go yeah. on TV. Um, <laughs> since if you had to choose, like, your all time favorite referee of the past, what would be your all time favorite referee? A uh, little flare. <laughs> little flare. <laughs> little flare um, is mine. <laughs> Earl Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Little Nate. Yeah. Favorite referee. I remember studying a bit from Mike Kyoto, watching a lot of his matches. He was like, I felt he was just a total pro in the ring. He was assertive. People took him serious. They respected him as a ref. Mm -hmm. um, looking back now, I also liked Earl Hebner. Yes. I mean, um, Gosh, what other name is synonymous? Y'all remember the NWA? Tommy Young was another. That guy. was the other one that I was thinking of too. Yes, Tommy Young. Oh my gosh, he was. I guess for me, it was just because Kyoto and Hebner are what I grew up with. So mm -hmm. I mean, that's who I was leaning towards. But and, and then Tommy Young, I think, was one of the first refs to do that slide for the pin. Yes, slide. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was doing that too. I tried to do it anyway whenever I could. Yeah. And another good referee was Brian Hildebrandt, Mark Curtis, another good referee. Yeah. Like, I remember watching him in Smoky Mountain. Like, a very great referee, too. Well, also, uh, especially with you guys being referees, uh, how do you feel when they do those uh, – if you played any of the current WWE video games, how they wore out the official? Oh. Uh, on the, on, yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. sure if you guys seen that or not, but – like when they do like those uh, road to WrestleManias or the career modes on like the WWE games, on the current ones, they actually blur out the referee's face so they don't have to pay. Yeah, the uh, we don't like that. We don't like that at all. Okay. So they don't have to pay them. I guess that's yeah. That's that stupid. leaves out a big piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we don't like that. Um, what do y'all think of that? I think that's stupid. Like you're. Yeah. Like, if you're going to have, you're going to have this other person in the ring, you might as well give them a face. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't care if it's made up AI or something, but you still give them a face. Even flipping on the Mike Tyson from Nintendo had a referee with a face. Yeah. Like, come yeah. on. If they can do a referee and, on that, a face on that game, they can do a flipping they, face on these. They butcher the footage. Yeah, because... Like, yeah, the, 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 they'll have the footage, but they'll just blur out the face of the of the. I, I, I mean, I, pu I play I play video but I play video games, but but I'm, I won't play play them games that, that that they butcher it like that right there. I, I you know I've got I've got to see the referee's face that they butchered that right there. I don't play it. And, and, and we were like, we know who that referee is, but yeah, but we, like we know who the referee is. Awful. The thing about it, they don't put a face on him. And, and if you don't want to pay them, don't pay them. Just put it in their contract. <laughs> still you give them the dignity of having their face not blurred unless they requested it yeah. like if the specific referee said hey no i don't want to be in the video game for whatever flipping reason 
then fine. Yes, blur them out or put a different face on it. But mm -hmm. no, don't blur it out just because you don't want to. I remember thinking about it for a while. Something I thought would have been kind of cool. I just don't know if they're ever going to do it. Is like have a referee mode where you can actually call a match oh, and you know, cool. break yeah. up, okay, get out of there. I don't know how they would do it for a video game, but actually having a chance to play the ref. Well, they could do it because I mean, much. how many times, even in the Attitude Era, where the wrestlers ref the match, Shawn Michaels yeah. even did it. It's like they could have easily switch it to be part they of can, the storyline. Yeah, I wish they thing. would do something like that, but they probably won't. Actually, well, it's two K twenty four four. They are bringing out a referee the referee mode back. Uh, it's going to be yeah. a, a special referee match, and you can use different buttons to use the commands. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's, yeah. that's, that's, gonna be, uh, that's neat. That's going to be neat. So they're, they're getting there. They're getting there. <laughs> One of the first things my friend said when I told him I was switching from wrestling to refing, he was like, well, good luck with it. I think you're going to do well, but just remember refs are unsung heroes. Of yeah, wrestling. It's true. Like, yeah. And that's another thing. Like, for example, when some referees are always in the same moment if they're in a big match. Like, for example... When Dusty Rhodes beat Ric Flair for the NWA Championship, Tom Young was right there. Like, there's always a moment for some of these referees. Hey, I refereed a big match. I'm, I'm happy. You know, like, like it's always good to referee a big match. It is. Were you all? Did you all go to that Waterfront Festival when they had that OBW five on five match? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah I, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> for the finish, it was like. I don't remember who Big John's partners were, but it ended up being him against uh, Rocco and Rob Conway. Mm -hmm. And then he was able to pin yeah. both of them. Like when he choke slammed uh, Rocco and the crowd ate that up, like I did the jump, of course. And then I went in the slide. That was at least several hundred people counting along with me. The one, two, three. Oh, yeah. And I and jumped. That's stuff, <laughs> yeah. That's the stuff you always remember. Uh, I, I, I'm I proud to remember. say that I was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was a great show. That was fun. It, yeah, it, it was. It's always good when and and sometimes people get like even ring announcers like when when ring announcers do their job like you hear people do the same stuff like and, and you know they'll do one fall and all this like it's it's the, good. The lady that was on the last um, series that we watched, the Royal Rumble, mm -hmm. when she was announcing. Mm -hmm. she was amazing oh my god yeah that was something we were talking about she that was just, that was fun that show she got into it and you could tell and it just hyped you up even more to see these people and see that's the thing that is kind of a little bit missing in wrestling nowadays yes. is how is how even the ring announcer can can get someone invested and and be like okay She's really excited for this match. So I should get excited. Yep. Um definitely. Yeah, I still man, growing up, I'm sure both y'all remember Howard Finkel. Oh, Howard oh, yeah. Finkel. Contest yeah. scheduled for one fall. <laughs> and especially when a new champion. And new. Yeah. Oh man, so many good times here in that. Like and, and he's another, Howard Finkel, another great ring announcer. There's a lot of great ring announcers. Gary Michael Capetta, another good one. Like, there's a whole bunch of great ring announcers. And there's also great announcers, too. Like, Jim Ross, the best ever. Jim Ross, team. Jerry Lawler. Yeah. Jerry Lawler. Like, and, and, and if the announcer, and that's the thing with announced teams nowadays. Like, they don't, some of them don't get invested in in the product in the ring well how can i get invested in the product if you're not so yeah that was but, the thing back then too like they they would actually announce what was going on in the ring instead yeah. of bickering with each other yeah they still bickered and said no i don't like that move or whatever like that but nowadays it's all about showing who's more face and who's more heel yeah. in the announcement yeah. rather than actually calling the shots but <laughs> when you were also talking about like emotionally invested i mean I think like Stone Cold and Jim Ross, it's so hand in hand because how many times did you hear Stone Cold, Stone yeah. Cold, Stone Cold? And, and, like, and for, yeah. example, for example, when Shawn Michaels beat Bret Hart, Vince McMahon's call, the boyhood dream. 
That's, that's come cool. true for yep. Shawn Michaels. You know, it, it, I know I grew it. up. Like, get, I mean, it's a get different, different thing with me. I, I, I mean, I, I grew up listening to Gordon Soley. Gordon Soley, yep. I, yeah. Yep. I had uh, some he, he, he I used just, to watch wrestling back in the day. Gordon Soley yeah. kept coming up. And and another good one that's very underrated is an announcer is Lance Russell. He was a yep. great announcer too. Lance Russell, great. Every every Saturday, him and Dave Brown was sitting right behind that table. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's just that's the thing. And a lot of people are saying, well, and and as you know, you know, you got. You got some tag teams like the Young Bucks who think they're the best tag team in the world when they're not, but but they think they are. But and, and they're saying, well, you know, and then they do fifty million super kicks in a match. Well, that's not memorable. Yes. Yeah, and I'm a I'm a big believer like the super kick should be a finisher, not a fifty yeah. times in a match because like Shawn Michaels did it right, like that super kick could hit out of nowhere. Yeah. I think my favorite was uh, Shelton Benjamin. That oh. one episode of Monday Night Raw, he jumps across. It was like, oh, God. That's it. Like, That's it. <laughs> but here's my problem with the Young Bucks. Uh, I, I mean, they, they people's got them hyped so so high that they that, that they got them believing that they're better than the Road Warriors, Rock and Roll Express, yeah. the Midnight Express, like, all, the great, all the great tag teams that's come before them. And I'm they, like, they, 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 they've got their head swell so big, it's amazing. And I'm like, they're not, if you put them in the, no one, no one's going to put them in the category of the Steiner Brothers, the Midnight Express, Rock and Roll Express, any other of these other great tag teams. Don't forget the Road but, Warriors. Yeah, the, the Road Warriors, brother. The Road Warriors. Like, the road like, warriors gonna, gotta love how the are they going to be, how, how are they going to be remembered, you know? Like, they're not going to be remembered because all they do is spots every match like you if you seen one young bug match you've seen them all they're not memorable no and, and people get and the young bucks fans get so mad when you say this and i was like i'm just making a point like and, and then they get mad when you say your opinion I'm like, okay. the thing that i the thing that i tell people when they talk about like oh this so-and-so is a great wrestler you need to watch more of their stuff um I, I forgot what example my, my stepbrother was giving me, but it's like when you talk about wrestling, how many times do people talk about the moves done in the match? Mm -hmm. Because I don't remember, like, I'll remember certain spots sporadically, remember but what the people, big, big things that, that or happened. that, like the big moments, but you remember the larger than life characters more than anything. Yeah. yeah. To me, the yeah. characters are Amazing. what draw tickets, what sell tickets, yeah. what, what the kids are excited about. I mean, the characters basically sell themselves. Mm -hmm. Look at Hulk Hogan, yeah. look at Undertaker. Yeah. Which I still can't believe WCW straight up told him, sorry, kid, but nobody's going to pay to see you wrestle. Uh, like, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Another, and no wonder WCW folded because of that. Yeah. 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 How but, are you going to tell somebody, hey, no one's going to pay a dime to see you? To yeah. me, I'd rather see somebody. I'd rather see a larger than life character like Undertaker's, but somebody who can work safe in ring mm -hmm. rather than see a gymnast doing yeah. slops up there. In, in wrestling, characters and story trumps almost everything that runs yeah. in, in, a, in a wrestling you know, ring. My, my only thing as far as in ring, you don't have to be a gymnast. Just do your moves well and do them safely. That's it. And that's you the know, problem. Like, I sure I've seen... seen I've seen people get hurt already doing botches mm -hmm. and doing trying moves that that no one should try, but they go along with it and then they get hurt. Like, why do that? Did so, you all see that thing? I think it was on Botch Mania where this guy like tries a double backflip and he legit lands right on his head or like yeah. his neck yeah. or something. I, th I thought he killed himself. And then he still kicks out of the pin. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, like, man, come on. And, and like if I was the ref, I would have thrown the match out. Like yeah, yeah. Match him, I'm calling that's it. The like, thing. like some of these referees, like I've seen it happens in AEW <laughs> a lot with these with these botches. WWE does it to a degree, but at least they tried to do the DQ thing. I uh, yeah. no, we ain't doing that. See, they 
that I think we tried watching AEW and it just pissed me off so much. <laughs> I'm like, really? Like you, you guys say you're better than WWE. At least WWE practices their moves before they show it on TV. And it like, at least try a move before to see if it succeeds or not. Uh, it sucks, I also drank the last beer, so I couldn't quiet her down. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was really proud. On that one, like, See, that's the thing. Like, that's what we've been saying, and people's like, "Oh, you're just an AEW hater." We did. I'm not a hater. I'm, I'm, I'm a safety. Yeah. I don't like. We had friends that worked with AB, AEW, and they all left. And it's like, yeah. why? Well, no, I think Stefan's still there. No, he went. Oh, he did. He is at AEW. Yeah. Yeah. Still, yeah. 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 He was but, a real awesome dude, by the way. We oh, wish yeah. he's yes. earned all of his success, and we amazing. wish him more. He is an amazing ref he and a wrestler. And a he friend. Was he was one of the first ones a to. Great friend. He was one of the first Love ones him. to congratulate us when yes. we found out we were expecting. Yes. When I saw that he he was signed to AEW, I was like, good for him. I think that's why we watched it was to watch him, and then yeah. like every and other was, match was just. And, and the thing is, it feels like he's the only knowledgeable referee around there. <laughs> Yeah. I don't doubt it. Yeah. No one, I don't think any ref has been trained like he has. No, like, he was got, at WWE for a while. You got that Aubrey Edwards who's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> horrible referee. Horrible. Yeah. For She's me, uh, a wrestling, uh, watching wrestling for me is, is uh, everybody in there do, do, doing their job, do, doing what they're supposed to do. And it, it, it's, and, it, I call, I call them all friends wrestling is what I call them because they bring their friends in. It's just a botch to me. It's just a mess to me. Uh, but but they, they 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 don't even do storylines or of anything. They they just throw the match together. Well, that's the thing. Why should I cheer this guy if I don't even know who he is? And then people get mad. It's like you should give AEW a chance. I'm like, okay, I'll give it a chance. I watch it. It and there's no story to be told. Give me a reason why this guy is here. Give me a reason why this guy is fighting this guy. Give me a reason. I want to know. Like, yeah. That I that was something I think WCW did that I didn't have a problem with is putting match like random matches because ultimately it's a yes. wrestling company. Yeah. So yeah. I mean you're gonna have pro matches and yes. whatever. But you also but, still have those storyline matches of like, yeah. hey, please let me wrestle this guy. That's what WWE or you want did the, really well. Or you the want the bad guy holding the title hostage and the good guy yeah. hero chasing him. And um, like, yeah, you can have your, and that's what your mid card sh um, yeah. matches are for, though, are those random matches mm -hmm. in order to get there and stuff. But and if you're gonna have any spot in the in the card where you're gonna be for focused more on the moves, I guess it would probably be the mid card. But again, like to me, the larger than life characters, the Hulk Hogan's, the yeah. Undertaker, the John Cena, even those are the guys that sell the tickets and fill up the and they, arena. And they don't have huge, 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 huge flaring moves. They have, yeah. they have their finishers. They have like Cena is AA and stuff like that. But they're basic and they're safe. Yeah. You see, I, I I praise the job guys is is yes. who I praise because I, I look at this right here, and this right here comes down from Tortori days back in my era when, when I watched wrestling. You know, it wasn't companies back then, it was Tortori days. You know, they go to different territories in the area to wrestle. They, they, they would trade wrestlers off to go go here, go there. Well, you see, the the, the, the guys on top, uh, it, when, when they wrestled the, the job guys, that was his job to wrestle them, make them look good, and not hurt them. Because that's a, because they knew they knew and they were smart. They knew you hurt that right there, guy. You're gonna lose money, and the rest of the jobbers are, are are gonna beat you up because hey, you cost me money. Yep. Yep. That's, exactly. that's the only thing that's kind of missing in wrestling is some enhancement matches. Because yeah. how are you supposed? Let's say you're bringing in a new guy in. Put him in the ring with an, a lower card guy so he can get some experience. And, and so so you can be invested in this guy oh this guy's a monster okay and and, and let him destroy a guy you know but they don't they don't get it yet. i saw a couple times and i'm not mentioning names but i saw a few times where a guy would find out he's losing a match and he would either like he would do his job well most of the time he would but he would give a real bad attitude after that like man i'm not no stinking jobber and storm out or whatever and i'm like 
and, and that's Scoot not messy, problem. Man. Like, well, that was is Danny's thing too. Was he was a jobber? Danny was a jobber, and Rip he, was a jobber. I mean, they yeah. they Rip always was, yeah. praised him. They he were was proud like, to be one. You like he would always say, it "Was it Rip or Danny that would always say it was better to be a jobber because you knew you had work." That night, yeah. you knew you were going to get paid. You had maybe more than one match, even whereas I mean, the other people didn't exactly. even know if they were going to go on or not. So you that hit was, the nail right on the head. Yes, you did. You hit the nail right on was, the head. I couldn't that was one you benefit that. too. That was one benefit too about being a ref was I was going to an OVW show. I knew I had work. I had yep. multiple matches, sometimes the whole show, and exactly. I would see guys show up. Hey, can I get a match or can I be on there? Like, oh, I don't know. We only have five spots. <laughs> Like, um, see, that's I'm my problem. I, 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 it kind of bothers me when, when some people are afraid. Oh, I'm afraid to do a job. It don't matter. It don't matter. Everyone, every top guy has looked at the lights sooner or later. You know, like that's you're not gonna be undefeated. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna be undefeated. Okay, yeah. you know, yeah. you're going, you're going to lose. Like, like. It, it it's a train thing. Either either yeah. do what you're supposed to do, or don't do it at all. Yeah. Like like they're not going to put up with some yeah. guy. I, I don't do jobs. Exactly. Yeah. You know, or yeah. I I, I got to be I got to win every match. Yeah. That ain't, that's not going to happen. Here's, here's here's the thing, Actually, and, and I've heard it said before, but uh, about a lot a lot of the jobbers, you know, and everything, you know. The promoters would, would, you know, they'd call them to come in, you know, to do this right here job and that right here job. And, and, and like, they are dependable. If I call, if I call one of them to come in here, they showed up no matter what they showed up to do their job and they That's do it real. very well. And, 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 and I, 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 I mean, I'll say it right here, right now. I praise the jobbers because I know how tough, how rough their job is. Yep. Do y'all remember that? Uh, I'm, that story of George South and Ric Flair where they were yeah. doing a TV taping. Yeah. And Dusty was booking. I think he was trying to mess with Flair. He was like, Hey, you're working today. And Flair didn't want to, but he was looking around. He's like, let me take George South. And they ended up like tearing the house down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's George South was worked, buddy. George, George South, South was even joking. He was like, I was such a jobber. You could put advertising on the bottom of my boots. And I was like, yeah, like, but I love to I love to see him because I love to watch him work. I mean, he was such a good worker, great worker. And see, and and a lot of those guys that that never won a lot of matches or or always lose, they're more memorable because they didn't bother them. Like Brooklyn Brawler, Steve Lombardi, you know Barry Horowitz, all these guys that just did not care about losing. They didn't care. They were just happy to be on the show. Well, I get it. Yeah. Here's the thing that why, why I'm talking about the jobbers and praising them so much is, is because I, I, I we do this, you know, uh, uh, on, on our podcast because I, I feel like it should be out there. And and I I, I get a lot of heat. You know, why are you praising all these jobbers? They never did anything in their career. So they did more in their career than you will ever do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, look at, I don't think he's considered a jobber, but our truth, yeah, he, he's memorable. Oh yes, he is. Like he's he, probably the most entertaining thing in yes, WWE right now. Yes, and mm-hmm. how many matches has he actually done? Right. Let alone <laughs> all he has to do is show up, like the Royal Rumble and the women's yeah. match. Like, oh, thing, is this like, not women? Is this not the men's? That's the thing. Like our he's truth. Not. He's never won a lot of matches. No, but he's always memorable. Yep. Yeah, and he's one of my favorites. Like yeah. I would, if if I'm told like he's on, I will watch the the show just for him because yeah. he is that memorable. He's so he's fun. fun. Roman Reigns and the Bloodline actually got me watching wrestling somewhat, like uh, last year's WrestleMania. Yeah. But our truth is the other one that's actually entertaining me, probably entertaining yeah. me the most. Like is. His gimmicks, his promos, the stuff with the Judgment Day right now. Oh yeah, like what was that spot with the jelly rolls or whatever in the clubhouse? It's like oh, okay. Mysterio. You know, I'm gonna be honest. He gets a lot of heat and does a good job at that. Yeah, he is. Be a and Nick Mysterio. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Nick doesn't have access to Facebook. <laughs> like, if, um, let's go back to the some of the low VW. Uh, what? 
what did y'all learn? Did y'all y'all were there with Trailer Park Trash as well, yeah. right, Frank? I worked. Wasn't. She wasn't. I Thank worked with him a bit. I never trained with him, but I worked yeah. with him in E Town. I worked that match that he had against Tracy Smothers. Yes. I was, yes. Yeah. I was green as grass, but Tracy was very, very helpful, very professional. That was fun. Yes, because I remember you were there with Trailer Park Trash. I knew she wasn't. I knew you were though. Yeah. yeah. And did. Did uh did he help you a lot? Trash? Yes. Yeah. He, him and Tracy Smothers, I remember just in the locker room, we were going over everything. Uh Trash is very cool. He was always telling stories about back in the day, like mm-hmm. stories or little bits of advice. I remember at Stay one in. point during that match with Tracy, like I don't remember exactly the moment, but I was talking to him. I was like, what are we doing right now? And he's like, This is how you work, kid like milking the moment, making the most yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand it then, but later on with time, I was like, it, he, 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 it's not good. It's so underrated as a worker back you in know, the day. Oh I, th- I, I think he it was so good awesome. to to milk the match because it brings the people more, more into the match, more yeah. excited uh, uh, on, on the edge of the, because that's what I love when I, when I watch wrestling is, is because, it, 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 you know, they, they are so tired in that ring. It just looks like they're just so tired in that ring, and you never know what's going to happen next. I do remember, like, the crowd was so invested in it. Yeah. By the time my hand hit that three count, that was a pop. That was probably the first pop that I remember going, like, wow, we got them. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, that's the, I was up. Oh, yeah. like, like, everyone was up at that show with Tracy and Trash. Like, that was a great match. And, and, and also, I remember when they brought Bill Dundee in. I remember yeah. that, that that place was packed. Like, and, and we made sure to get front row seats all the time. We try to get yeah. front row seats. We, all we, the time. we try to get front row seats every time we show. Every time we come to the show, we try to get front row seats because because we just wanted to be that close. Do y'all remember that match when Devin won the title from Ryan? He had yeah. Yeah. And Casey helping him. Yeah, yeah. dude, that was. I don't think I ever saw a more hostile crowd. I was waiting for somebody to jump the rail and go after Josh or or uh, Devin or someone. But it's, man, by the time we got back to the locker room, it was like, dude, that was awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, like, and that's heat, dude. Like, it's always good to get heat. Like, because it, it yeah, it's it, it's good because because you know because you're doing the, your job. Some of the wrestlers, you know, it, it, you know, I, I I hear you know they. They, they, they love it when the crowd gets it. They, they love it when, when the crowd starts shaking that rail and, and everything. You know, it, it, because you know, in some ways it's bad, in some ways it's good. But, but, but the bad guys say, you know, if 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 if, so, if somebody hates me so bad that that they that they're that they're willing to jump that rail, I feel like I've done my job for the night. Yeah, I remember one of the one of the people I remember most with. Like embracing the heel heat was probably Josh. Yeah. Like yeah. he took he so much pride. He, he took so much that. pride. And he was he thrived with that heel heat. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I remember I was I didn't rep the match, but I was upstairs on the second floor watching it in E Town. He when he got super kicked off the apron, yeah. like where everybody in that crowd jumped up and was like, "Yes!" <laughs> <laughs> and see, that's the thing. Like that, that's the thing that's missing in wrestling sometimes nowadays like if someone has so much heat and, and then finally he gets what's coming to him and, and and the crowd goes crazy like nowadays and that's another thing about you don't see a lot of wrestling managers nowadays either and that's that's another sad thing yeah. see Heyman. He's yeah, about and, that's, and that's about it yeah you that's, got prince nada but you know <laughs> but, dancing, yeah that? I mean, but, back in the day, you had Jim Cornette, you had Paul Bearer. Pretty much yeah. almost every other wrestler had a manager Sunny. of some sort <laughs> yeah. in their corner, whether it be their wife or an actual manager person or something. Yeah. Um, now, when y'all were in OVW, what uh, did y'all enjoy being with Danny Davis? Did y'all learn a lot from Danny? Danny was in the office a lot, so didn't learn didn't come so much. much. Um, but when he did, but when he did, and when he, he was listened. talking to us, yeah, I mean, he commanded respect. Everybody listened to him. Yeah, 
there were a few times where he would just have a talk with us before the show and just stuff that was going on stuff that to keep in mind and that was going on with the company but i, I mean, think he was just by the time i got there he was about ready yeah retirement I tell, like when i was when we were watching like because i've we watched danny since 98 when he ran ovw yeah. so i could tell he was kind of starting to it was also very, it, when he did talk to it was very motivating though like yes. i was proud to be part of ovw so when y'all were in OV, were y'all really proud to be in OVW? Like, did y'all really enjoy it? I was for the longest time. And then I guess towards the end of my time there, I was going through some personal stuff where my head just wasn't. Yeah. I actually thought I was about done with wrestling when I left OVW. It wasn't until I think like March, February, or March 2017, uh, Charlene invited me up to Owensboro and. I thought I was done at that point, but I got in the ring there at Big B and I was nervous as hell. But uh, Ryan, who does his own podcast, he was in the crowd and he, he saw me there. He was like, man, you haven't missed a beat. Like you're you need to get your cardio back. But like you were in all the right spots and you did. You haven't missed a beat. You look great out there. So that that kept me going. I, I'd like to talk about something and, and I'd like to have both of your inputs uh, on. on I, I don't know if you agree with me or not. But uh, Nick Densmore, uh, I I I I love to watch watch him perform, and 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 I and I I got so tired of him being laid back and laid back and laid and laid back that he never made made it made it to WWE, and 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 when he finally made it there, that they gave him a gimmick that I, that I absolutely that I absolutely thought was just awful. They 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 never let him wrestle his way, never let him use his moves. And, and and I thought that was just so yeah so, so low for them to do that to him. It made him Eugene. I heard that character was pretty controversial. There were a lot yeah. of people that didn't like it. Yeah, but I, I, to Nick yeah. to Nick's credit, he got it over. He talk he about it. turning chicken crap into chicken salad. There you go. Yeah. Like he he said, okay, you want to give me this gimmick? I'll get it over the best I can. Because. And, and I remember, I remember yeah. everything about you. I remember the musical chairs episode on Raw. Yeah, and he had the bouncy house. I, yeah. like, and, and you remember? Was, you remember when he wanted the bounty? Yeah, yeah. he was trying to get the bounty. <laughs> the bounty <laughs> to pick her up. Great. Yes, like, like he did everything. Anytime they gave Mick something to do, he ran with it. Like he didn't complain. He didn't do it. Same thing when he was when he got uh when the uh the McMahon's fucking put uh what is it uh green paint on him yeah yeah, yeah I remember he, that he, like he got it over like it didn't bother him like like he goes okay no problem he still had the green boots and he still had the green boots <laughs> that very day it never changed it but it just he it, it just made me be, be, because I knew that he was such a great great talent. And, and it just hurt me so bad in a way for, for them to give him something like that, just knowing how great talented he was. There's there's a lot of people. I don't know if it's just the right place at the right time or what, but I've, I'm realizing like there's a lot of people who just had immense talent that for whatever one reason or another, the cards just didn't go their way. Yeah. I would yeah. probably even say I'd, like Dolph Ziggler was yeah. one of those guys. I never yeah. saw that guy have a bad match, yeah. but he was always like mid card. He, I think he had the world title a couple times. And, and but, a lot of people like, and, and that's what I would say. People say, why do you like Dolph Ziggler so much? He's entertaining. He's a great worker. Like yeah. he puts his heart and soul in everything he does. And and you could tell he's passionate in what he does. You could tell every time he goes in the ring, he wants to try to steal the show the best he can. You put him in any, any kind of match. Like you know. Anything. And he'll, and, and that's the thing. Like people got mad. It's like, Oh, Dolph Ziggler's a jobber. I was like, dude, he is the best seller of this era nowadays. What I remember, <laughs> I remember that one Royal Rumble when uh, Karma showed up <laughs> and she freaking manhandled him, and he sold the crap out he of it. Just do a flip when he took that bomb, like, like, and people was like, oh, he's put, oh, he's doing something with a woman. Who cares? Like, who cares? It's memorable. And it got karma over. She was a beast. Like, and, and people's like, 
you know, but if I was Dolph Ziggler, I wouldn't have done it. I was like, if you, know, you would, you would have done it. Some, sometimes so I, 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 like he's getting paid the yeah. big bucks and not you. And you're yeah. just sitting on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, and, and and I'm proud of Nick, like Nick Nemeth. He's doing great things in the, in in the wrestling business nowadays. Like he, he's working in Japan, he's working in TNA, yeah. he's doing he's doing everything. You know, I was thing. smiling. I think I saw he won the the world championship or something over yeah. there. That was like the first thing I saw on Facebook one morning, and I was like, oh hell yeah, cool. Like I'm he's like, definitely put the blood and tears in. And, and people's like, well, he's not in WWE. It's like you don't have to be in WWE to to. To make an impact in the wrestling business, you don't. Or to make money. <laughs> yes, you don't. Like, like WWE. Yeah, if you're a young guy and you want to get to the big time of an AEW and WWE, yeah, but, but you start out from the bottom and you work your way up. Sooner or later, you'll get there. You just mm, gotta put your time in. Like, like no one's gonna be make it to the main roster of WWE or AEW like that. You know, I, I I see I see sometimes this right here a lot. The, uh, uh, some of the, some of these wrestlers, some of them will not sell for for, for anything. They, uh, they 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 think they, they figure that you know the, the 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 big guys, you know, the big timers making the big money. That, that if, if they get in there with somebody, you know, uh, and and they 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 don't want to sell what the guy's giving them. Yeah, yeah, that's when the ego gets in the way. Like yeah. that's gonna work for me, like. No, to me, it's just being a professional. Like, yeah. if I had something to do, if I didn't like it, I would voice my concerns, but yeah. I would still go out there and do what I was told to do. Oh. I mean, you know, I, you know, I, I felt like you know, if I if I'd been a wrestler, you know, and they, they wanted me, you know, I, I, I feel my, my 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 duty is if they 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 wanted me to to, to wrestle this, you know, if I'm a big time guy and they wanted me to wrestle this guy, right? There's a reason why they want me to wrestle. If, if, if a promoter told me, "Look, you're gonna have to get this guy over. We're, we're gonna have to uh, do something." Hey, I, I feel like, hey, my job is to get this guy over, and and, and I'm gonna get him over. Now, I heard that a lot of Shawn yeah. Michaels back in like the '90s or yeah. when he was the champion. It was like he'd mm -hmm. complain like hell, like make everybody miserable, but then he would go out and do the job that he was yeah. asked and, and do a hell of a job doing it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, yeah. I, you know, I, I I'd probably say, well, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm I'm the I'm the I, you know, I, I'm one of the big guys here. Why, why would I want to get this this guy over? You know that that it, it, it's not even the same caliber as me. Uh, but, but still, yet you go out there and you do it anyway because hey, that's that to me that's that, that's business. I got one you know, business. Uh, is business. Uh, we don't want to keep you guys on for too much longer. Um, yeah. But uh, it's, it's just so exciting. It, I mean, I mean, yeah. it's just so exciting to talk to you two about, about the. Yeah, we really appreciate y'all doing this for real. It means a lot to us. Uh, you know, you, you don't have to go into any, any detail if you guys don't want to. But uh, what led you guys actually wanting to leave OBW? Um, there was a couple of different things. One was I was pregnant and I couldn't wrestle for a while. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was. Uh, some politics, I'll put it nicely. <laughs> there was some politics involved, and I I had decided that I was done with OVW. I, I was able to get jobs elsewhere, and considering that I had my career with as a vet tech um, going very well, and I was a lead at a hospital and everything, and on my way to being a practice manager, like, I... I found that if I still wanted to wrestle, even we live near Nashville and we knew a lot enough people down there that could get us or at least me work and stuff if I wanted to continue it after being pregnant. So that's exactly our what friends I in Owensboro even told her um, yeah. if you get if you want to get in the ring over here, just let us know and we'll find someone to work with you. So. They had a lot of talent go through there. Maria was there. Uh, Haley Shadows, Emily Kennedy. Shauna Reed, she was really good. Big B was fun. They had a lot of talent. I think for me, and it was Omen. Jake Omen yeah, was up, up in Indiana. Fishers, that Indiana. Always offered us, if ever we wanted to work, we could go up there and work with him. For me, it was like when a comedy. You all were gone. I was like, the two best referees are gone. Like, what happened? You know, I was, I was, I was upset. I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> 
I've thought about doing a surprise with with you guys. Y'all were great referees. Thanks. We appreciate that, man. I actually did see uh, Devin. We went to go see him here at Booker T's school up in Houston. And even though he was a heel for that match, he smiled when he saw me in the crowd. And Andrews. Yeah, Shane Shane Andrews was there too. And Um, they both like uh, broke character just to say hi. And they even waited for us after the show. Shane came up to us mid match and was like, hey, wait until after the show. I want to talk with y'all and stuff, like just to catch up and everything. So it was really cool to see that. It's like, wait a minute. You're supposed to be a heel. You're supposed to be hated. What the heck? Why are you saying you're talking to us? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a lot of politics with OVW. And as much as I do. Politics and ego. Yes, ego on certain people. Yeah, um, not everybody has the ego there. I'm not saying that. This yeah, certain. Like, well, because when I I was like, wait a minute, they're gone. Oh no, man, I was I was upset. I was like, that's not right. I, I missed those guys. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I've, I've had dreams about going doing surprise spots and surprise visits and everything, but you know, it's probably not going to happen. I this year there was a <laughs> show where I. I, I don't know if I had to work late. There was something that happened at the last minute that I wasn't able to make. It was a TV taping. And I ended up staying late. And I went home later that night. And I had a my girlfriend at the time texted me. Some of the crowd was sit, chanting, we want AJ. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> they're chanting that? Like, I'm just a ref. But she was like, yeah, they were, they were saying but that. You two, you, you both were great referees. And that's why y'all remember. See? Because y'all were trained the right way, unlike some referees. Yeah, that's yes. a big shout out to Joe Wheeler too. Yes. Oh, Joe Wheeler. Oh, a legendary oh, yeah. referee, by yeah. the way. I'm that is Joe. some of my best memories, like away yes. from the ring, because we would hang out at his place and watch the TV taping for that week, and he would go over it. Like, why are you like? Are you seriously telling me you can see his shoulders from that angle where you're pinning? And I'm like, so so did Joe <laughs> Wheeler help you all out? On the ref, on the referee training aspect too. Yes, very much so. He was my main source of wisdom on refing. Um, I mean, not otherwise just refing. I would have to like do big jumps and everything like that, and get hit by five different objects in a day. Not I just mean, refing, but like but, uh, the locker room in general, too. life in general. Like, like he, he taught so much. He was one of those that. Like others, there wasn't many that would sit and listen to him when he told his stories, but his stories were so amazing. And even from like the garden days and everything. And I just, I would love it. Like we would go when we actually started, they like got together and everything. We would actually stay with Papa Joe and um, uh, he would tell us more stories and he was that's why I call him Papa Joe's because he's like a dad that we never really had. Growing we were up, briefly so. talking about doing like our own little ref gimmick where we would show up in like these business suits and sunglasses, like a mob almost. <laughs> and he would be like the godfather of it all. And I would carry his suitcase and mine and the three refs yeah. would show up together. We never did it, but yeah. we talked about it. It was a fun idea. Um oh. So uh, was so Joe was really was really happy to mentor you guys and yeah and I, oh, yeah, yeah and we loved him we still do he was yes. he was actually there the day Zek was born Zechariah yes. um, our son and he was the only one that my mom actually voluntarily handed Z over to <laughs> he was he is Z's godfather and yeah. And, and and I remember Joe Wheeler ever since the USWA days. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, Joe and, and had I, so many stories and lessons. And I was like, he was the most unappreciated asset in the yeah. locker room. Underappreciated. Very much underappreciated. They took the so much advantage of him. Hell, uh, uh, w- uh, Joe Wheeler was at uh, uh, some of the OVW E-Town shows. Yes. Hell, we got a picture with Joe Wheeler because you know we're we, 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 we a legendary referee. Yeah. Like I remember him all the way from the USWA days. Yeah, Do the you all remember that, I gotta that, get that one SNS where Joe actually took the plunge, like Rocco plunged him? Yeah. 
Did you see that? Yeah. Like, so scared for Joe, but he was like, I'm fine. I can take it. I remember bolting to the ring. Like, if people like, why do you like Joe Wheeler? It's like, he, he is the best referee. Like, he's a great referee. Like, you always have these great referees that go underappreciated. Yeah. You like, know, you, you know, it's sad. I'm, I'm going to say this uh, about Joe Wheeler and, 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 and you two and, and, and all the referees. In my opinion, that that did such a great job, that you, you and you guys got it was so people you were just so underrated as as being a performer yourselves inside that ring. Thank and, you. Thank you. And, and and we and and I remember watching you guys in OVW. Like y'all were always on time. You always were so precise, and you were always so nice to the wrestling fans. If you wanted a yeah. picture or anything, y'all yeah. were. So nice yeah. and everything and we really appreciated that i remember when i was little and even like before i got into wrestling i was that fan that wanted the picture mm -hmm. that was a part of it and man i remember when i was really little like watching Shawn michaels like i lived and died with wrestling at the time and i think there was one pay-per-view where sean was heel i think it was survivor series 97 like yeah. i lived and died with it so much i remember when uh when they screwed Bret Hart out of the championship and like everyone that I wanted to win lost their match that night. Like I boarded the bus to school the next morning and I just like stormed in. I sat in my seat, just don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, finally one of my friends came up and was like, dude, what's wrong? I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. It took like lunchtime until I finally told him my favorite wrestlers lost last night. <laughs> Yeah. And he and just thing, I, would, it out laughing. I would do that when I was in elementary school and middle school. Like we would always talk about wrestling. And 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 it's always and it always made the time go by faster in school. In elementary school, I only had one friend that I could talk wrestling with. So he of course was my best friend. Mm -hmm. But two moments that he never let me live down was like the day after Stone Cold won the championship, I was like bouncing off the walls when we got to school the next day i i was so stoked and then um you remember that monday night raw when dx attacked wcw yes yeah, yeah. yeah. the next day after that i kept doing the the crotch chop <laughs> like, i think we all been uh in trouble in school for that back in the day i know yeah, <laughs> yeah. i got in trouble for wrestling shirts that they sent me to the bathroom yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> They did I too. I they, walked in. They did too. In uh, elementary school was, and I walked in with a Kevin Nash that said "Big Sexy" on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the teacher let's, goes, I don't let's think just say to wear that shirt. <laughs> that me and her mother got called to school a lot to have a little talk with the with the with the principal, the the, the teachers, and, and and really, I'm gonna. Tell you too exactly what I told them. Listen, uh, the day they the, 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 we we would take them wrestling, and, and Tom, Tommy there was uh, 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 he, he he was he was walking. Joey wasn't even walking. He he was still an infant, and, and that's where they started watching and and looking at wrestling when they were that young. Wow. And and, uh, and, and I, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and I I told the teacher and the principal, look, you know, don't blame them. You know, you can blame me because I drug I drug into places like that right there because because I love wrestling, and I I I, I just wanted yeah. to I just wanted to show them what what it you know what it was like, you know, back when I was a kid and watched it. I firmly believe, like at its best, wrestling is probably the most magical mm -hmm. sports slash entertainment out there. Like I had a friend who. He didn't watch wrestling at the time, but he still lucked into tickets to WrestleMania 24. And before he went to the show, he was like, this stuff's fake. I don't know why people like it. Well, I texted him by the end of the night. He was like, dude, that was amazing. This stuff is so intense. Like, yeah. you better you better effing do this now because I want to see you yeah. on TV. And yeah. see, that's I, our problem. I, 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 I try yeah. to tell somebody at work about it, you know, because he, he watched the wrestling on television. He goes, he goes why know, do you like this? Why do you like this? It looks you know fake and stupid and all that stuff i was like if you ever actually went to a actual wrestling show you might enjoy yourself 
Yeah. You know, uh, if, and, and, and if, that's if you went thing. to a live show instead of watching yes. on television. Yes, it's a lot different going live than watching on television. If you go live, yeah. it's a completely different experience. It's like baseball. And, yes. Yeah. And, 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 and I can't stand some anti wrestling people that go, well, you, and, and every time they always say, you know, wrestling's fake, right? And I just say, and all I say, yeah, yeah, wrestling's fake. And I'm like, well, so is your movies you watch. Exactly. You know, like, and I'm yeah. like, you don't see Superman going yeah. through the wall, do you? Like, like it's, I was like, you watch movies? Yeah, well, it's the same thing. You watch TV, don't you? Yeah. Like yeah. shows, on reality shows. Yeah. And even reality TV is yeah. scripted. Yeah. And, 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 and the bad part, they, when I say that, they get upset. I'm like, I'm just telling you, it's the truth. Like, that's the way it, like nope. it's the same way with, with you like, both being in the ring yeah. uh it, it, it is wrestling fake it's it's not fake in the sense that it's it legit hurts yeah. <laughs> like i have i have my back i have back pains and leg pains partly from being yeah. a vet tech but mostly from being in the ring my back hurts i remember in the beginner's that. class i banged up my ribs i i still swear one of them was broken but the doctor swore that the x-ray showed it wasn't and i'm like and then um i remember every monday after a weekend of training i'd look into the mirror before i got in the shower i'm like okay what new bruises do i have this time and there was one um, one time i had a show who was it um Ivy, what's her name? Huh? She was on uh, um, Ring of Honor. I can't remember her. Uh, Taylor. Yeah. Taylor Hendricks. Yeah. Yeah, I had a match with her, and the next day, like oh, I her, was just her chest. entirely because she had a slap fest, and people were like, "Why did you let her do that to you?" Well, it didn't hurt then. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and Taylor Hendricks is another great worker. Yeah, she I, I enjoy Taylor. She was a great worker. The yeah. thing, like when people call it fake, I say it's predetermined. It's but I saw, choreographed. but I saw too yeah. many people get hurt that I, I'm not going to call it fake. It's and choreographed, what, is what I was. That's what we try to say. I was like, it's not fake. It's choreographed. Yep. And they're like, well, how do you know? You're not in the business. It's like I don't have to be in the business to know. Like, you it, can tell. <laughs> yeah. And if people's like, why did y'all want to do wrestling podcast and be on YouTube and do wrestling? We've been wrestling fans ever since we were born. <laughs> This is our love and our passion. Like for Joey, it was before you could walk, huh? Yes, yes. <laughs> and that's yeah. the thing. Like, I, 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 like I'm, I'm going to say this right here. Go ahead, go ahead, Tom. I got to say this. And then okay, go ahead. People that come on YouTube and do wrestling get facts wrong, don't know what they're talking about, and that's another reason why we started doing YouTube on wrestling and everything else because we're very knowledgeable, <laughs> and, very passionate. That's for sure. Yeah, uh, he knows. Someone who is in the ring, I appreciate that. When the, uh, you 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 talked about uh, Joey, yeah, he was just an infant. But 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 here was the thing: we 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 we, we try. Me and my wife try to get front front row seats, you know. And and, and every time that, that a wrestler picks up pick a wrestler up for a body slam, uh, Joey hear that he'd move his head, he'd twitch his head around to see to see where the noise is coming from. It was it was just so cool to watch that right there, and and it it you know, I'm glad that I did that right there because the, you know they're they're as passionate about it as wrestling as I am, and I'm proud yeah. of that. And, and another thing that's what and we pass it on to his son and my nephew and his and his uh and his and stuff like that. Like we when we took him to wrestling, like you could tell like he enjoyed it like and it's a family thing like like if you want to take your family out somewhere and there's a wrestling show go because it's the most enjoyable thing it really is it it's is not AEW because it's not family appropriate <laughs> i agree that I was agree. One, of her oh, that was concerns. My, one of my Probably biggest, biggest things yeah. was the female wrestlers on mm -hmm. there i was like i could see yes less skin or more or yeah less skin at a gentleman's club than i could yeah. at AEW. and that's see like, that that's the thing get some gear like i understand that you're trying to appeal to a 
to a demographic like it, but there's also kids that watch professional wrestling too. Yes, like, and there are families that yeah. And yeah. like how who that was one thing like WWE actually like yeah they still had revealing gear, but how many female wrestlers wrestle with a necklace? Yes. Like why do you have a choker on? There's no reason for you to have yeah. a choker. You could legit get hurt. Why are you showing half your butt when you yeah. don't need to? Like, you're no, when I think there was a boob that popped out. I'm like, you guys are on television. Yes. Like, yes. And that's the thing. Like, no one's going to remember who these people are. They remember, they remember your work rate. They don't know about what you wore. They want to know if you can work in the ring. And, and they remember you on how you work in the ring, not not by showing stuff. Yes. And character and character, work rate. Yeah. Yes. And that that is one thing that it like WWE has worked so hard at building up the female wrestler, like as an actual wrestler. That's not something just they come a long way with, yeah. A, a body, you know, to show off next to the guy. Like they actually have a legit wrestling program for women. And mm -hmm girls can look up to that. AEW took that and just said, ha, forget you. Let's throw women back down into the dirt and stomp yeah. on them some more. And it's like, that to me just says you're it's, trash and you deserve to not be liked. That was something I think OVW actually did right for a while was they had Hana, they had Jess, they had Jesse Bell, Maria, um, it was Mickey Knuckles, yeah. I think, was there for a while. Yeah, Mickey like taught me a few things. The they had legit. OVW wrestlers. had a legit women's division for a while when we I, were. There. That's the thing. I remember the women's division in OVW was great. Like, yeah, like they had so much great women's wrestlers there. Yes, I remember watching my uh, back in the day when, when I was when I was young. I, I, like I said, watching Dick the Bruiser's territory. I, I, I remember watching the, the female wrestlers back then. My, my favorite wrestler was Princess Jasmine when she come out there. I, I, I loved that's watching that. That's cool, though. And, and that's the thing. It's like, definitely come a long way, and that's something yeah. WWE is doing right. And, yeah. see, and this empowers. And see, that's the thing. Like, there's little girls that say, "Hey, I could be just like a Charlotte Flair or a Bianca Belair." Or, or, or any of these women wrestlers, you know? Like, yeah. Do you remember that story? No, but you were about. That like... actually reminds me of a story. Um, shortly after we moved in together, we were, you know, it was a little bit, but we were in Bowling Green at the time and yeah. we were going to go to that to the live event at the WKU basketball arena. Yeah. yeah. We went up to get our tickets and there was this mother with her daughter there. And the daughter oh, yeah. was like a young girl, and she was like, "Yeah, when I when I grow up, I want to be a wrestler." And she had that look like she was serious. And the mom was like, "I don't like it, but I support her." And then I was like, "Well, you know, she was the OVW Women's Champion." Mm -hmm. And as soon as I told the little girl that, her eyes just yeah, like oh, like see, the time. See, that's the thing. Like you, that's the thing. Like these young girls that want to be a wrestler when they grow up you could and they go through watch the wrestlers the women's wrestlers on tv and it's like hey i could do that yeah if, if, I if, if i put my mind to it i could be just like just like that yep. i remember last year i was watching wrestlemania i admit i was watching it strictly just because i was bored like mm -hmm. i didn't have anything else to do so i was like let me see how wrestling's gonna come along and the women's matches actually surprised me like yeah. i didn't know what to expect because i didn't really know any of them but I was like, wow, like they went above and beyond. Like they they contributed. They tore the house down. They yeah. put on the same great matches just like the men do. And they but, and sometimes yeah. and sometimes the women's wrestlers don't get the credit they deserve. Yeah. On, and sometimes they put on way better matches than some men. Yeah, I'm so proud of them. I, I am I I'm I'm so proud proud of how far women wrestling has gone. And and my God, it's, 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 the, the the ladies, man, they, they they can tear the house down as well as a man can. We were really good friends, still are really good friends with a Scarlet from OBW. Yeah, we yeah. call her Aunt Shania to Z, 
and she was also there the day Z was born. And we had um, some family problems at the time with some people that we were worried they were going to make a scene at the hospital. Yeah. And Shania and Joe were like, trust us, if you don't want somebody to get through that door with us here, they're not going to get through that effing door. Go. <laughs> so, okay, cool. That's the thing, like, that's the thing about wrestling. They support everybody. Like, you're when you're one of the boys, you're one of the boys or girls, they're going to protect you. They always look out for everybody that's in that it's, room. It's a family. Yeah, yeah. it's a family. And, and, and that's what that's what I love about the wrestling business. I hate some people that say, oh, you know, oh, I was there. Politics. And, the politics yeah. can be toxic. Yeah. And I saw that in some locker rooms. We saw yeah. it at OVW. But there were a lot of times, too, where it was just a big family. And yeah. Owensboro, White River especially. Like, I remember the day after one of the shows, we were playing kickball and doing a water balloon fight. <laughs> and it was just. It was just pure good times. It was fun. I remember there was a White River show. I was in the audience, and this one guy was. Oh, God. It was. He wasn't even cheering or booing or anything. He was just being annoying. Yeah. And so I called him out and I yelled at him for it. And then he tried to like show up face. And one of the wrestlers that um, I was, was just, already on, he was in the ring and stuff like that. I was and, in the ring, so I couldn't um, do anything. But it, it's not like I wrestled or ref for. Uh, white river i was just with him mm -hmm. and the other wrestler saw me about to get into it with this random stranger and he came over and he was, was protecting like he was trying ready to, protect to step me in and, uh, just because i was with him you know and it's like that's a family well, right there yeah. and, and yep. all, i exactly. got a question for you all real quick do you yep. get does it bother you guys when a wrestling fan either tries to go after a wrestler or hackle a wrestler. Does that bother you guys? It depends yeah. on the situation. Like if, if, if uh, they're a heel, it's expected, you know, to get like not full on harass, but yeah. you know, that confrontation, cause it actually helps build up the heel. I think character. a real heel takes it as a badge of honor. Yeah. So I mean, they're probably the exception, but there are those occasions where it's like, why you're just being stupid and annoying and obnoxious that it's yeah. like you deserve to get thrown out. The one thing that I'm glad about that I never had to deal with is I never had a fan actually try to come into the ring because I've seen like everybody breaks character, beats the crap out of the fan to protect each other. Cause you don't know what they have, if they have a weapon or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did work a show in Owensboro where uh, I don't know if the name Larry Jones, he worked for impact for a while. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was working with him in Owensboro and he was talking trash to one of the fans and the fan actually threw a can of Pepsi at him and it missed both of us. Like I straight up ducked like what the hell? And uh, Larry was still laughing at the guy. Security actually threw the guy out of the show. It, it was oh, like, Lord. I was right by the guy who threw it. And like, it wasn't even that the wrestler said anything bad. Like the wrestler didn't he even said, say anything. No, to Larry him. said something about his mom. Like oh, I'm staying with your mom tonight or whatever. And it oh, took my a second. Well, because there was other things that happened after that. And then finally the camp. And then finally, he, like, it took it a second to process, that. and then I just see him fling the soda. <laughs> and I was like, oh. like, like, for example, uh, do y'all remember Jay Bradley? Yes. Yes. The well, we were in the front row, and he was making fun. Of <laughs> he was making fun of my dad over here. Saying, I, I want to. I, 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 I'll admit, it, I, I want to get that ring and whoop his he butt. Making fun of me. He goes, "Won't you be quiet, you hillbilly redneck?" And I, <laughs> and he's like, I'll come up the room with this well. He goes, Come on. <laughs> it is hilarious. And then I already had one foot over that rail. The referee jumped out there. <laughs> we had to go. You can't go over the rail. <laughs> Did y'all ever see that video where um it was Stone Cold and Triple H and like yeah. back in the day and the fan got in the ring, like yeah. Hunter picks him up and flips him over and they and you see, yeah. see Bachiota kicking him. Just like a yeah. soccer ball, dude, yeah. just <laughs> over and over. I was like, and, and that's the thing, like, people's like get so passionate. I, I like the passion, but you're going to get in that ring, you're going to get hurt. Now, I, like I said, bring we, the passion, bring all the passion, but stay on yeah. your side of the rail. There you go, mm -hmm. stay on your side, not yeah. on our side. 
I, we, like I said, I see me, me and my wife would take the, take the kids to, to see Rip Rogers wrestle. Hey, you know, at that right there time, Rip, Rip Rogers, you know, was a bad guy and everything. Everybody be booing him, you know, hissing him, everything like that right there. It, I, after the match, he, he, we, we'd go see him after the match and everything. And he'd look at me and say, I thought you weren't booing me. I said, I can't. I like you. <laughs> yeah. He's like, well, I'm a heel. You can't, you can't cheer me. I said, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I like you. I can't, I, I, I can't boo you. <laughs> I remember in 2010, I went, or no, 2009, I went to the first uh, WWE TLC in san antonio and randy orton had that match with kofi kingston oh yeah i was a huge orton fan he was the other reason i went to ovw and after he won the match he was the heel i should have been booing him but i actually cheered i was like you the man randy uh, and the little kid sitting next to me was pissed <laughs> randy orton yeah he's older now but here's the thing he gets the business he, he was knows born. how to work he's one he of the smartest workers i've ever seen yeah he is so smooth in the ring. Everything's precise and perfect. Yeah. Um, that was one of my favorite wrestling documentaries, too, was about oh, yeah. before he grew up and, or when he was growing up and before he got in the ring. Um, yeah, I remember I was cheering for him, and then that little kid got mad at me. And then his mom, I guess, or whoever was sitting next to him, she was like, Mijo, you can't boo him. He's a walking work of art. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> but uh, it was funny that was it was good times but Definitely. yeah um orton before i became a ref orton was my dream opponent like he was the reason i the main reason i went to obw i i wanted to be the next orton it was my dream boat. <laughs> <laughs> i thought that was finn Balor. Oh, he's he's the recent one. Orton was long term. <laughs> Do y'all have any favorites right now in WWE? Yeah, there's a lot. I like Cody, of course. Cody Rhodes, great. Guy. I listen to his theme song every time I hit the gym. I do too. I, I have it as Marine Tone on my phone. That's how great that song is. I mean, of course, <laughs> of course, we watched him in OVW as so, well. And yeah. uh, so for y'all, it must be extra special. Oh, oh, it, it, it's very extra special because we got to see him live uh, quite yeah. a few times, and and to see him going going for the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania, yeah, the Universal Title. So, it, it's amazing. Like where he came from, OVW to where he is now is great. Like, and it shows. Like he even learned from OVW, and and it shows. Yeah. And, and I'm like, all these guys that came from OVW just learned so great in WWE, and they're doing great there. Do y'all like Roman Reigns? Oh, Roman Reigns, yes. I love yeah. Roman. The best heel he's, of all time right he's now. He's come so far. Like, I think he's earned his success, too. Oh, yeah. Especially after, I think it was WrestleMania 32, when you could tell he was getting clearly booed, but he was mm -hmm. doing his best. Yeah. And then... Like for me, I drew the line when they were wishing bad on his daughter too. Yeah, that that that's another problem I have with some wrestling fans. Everything How are you going to wish bad problems on a wrestler? Yeah. Like, like for example, The Rock. Like someone wished harm to The Rock's daughter. How can you do that? Like, I think it's one thing to say something to them and say, "Oh yeah, I hope you do this or that." Yeah. Like they expect, but to their family who like has a nothing freaking to kid, do with it, like to me, to yeah. innocent people. But Roman, Roman persisted and he stuck around and he kept putting in the work. Like I'm a huge fan. I still like watching that promo they did before WrestleMania, the Goodfellas bit. Yes. Dude, when he broke the bottle, he's like, "This guy was asking for WrestleMania tickets." Ah! <laughs> Roman Reigns has done a great job. He's come a hell of a long way. Yes. And, and, and he's a great worker. He is yeah. like a great heel and, and everything. And another person I like in WWE, I like I like Kevin Owens, another great worker, you know, and he's good. I like I was surprised how agile he was for yeah, for guys. a big guy. Yeah. And people's like and, and another one that's very underrated, and he's a big guy. That I've been impressed with has been Bronson Reed. Hmm. The way that the way that big man comes off the top rope. Yeah, that's shot. right. That's right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize how old our truth was till like a year or two ago. I know. Like he, he and for him, B, 
being that age and being in that great of shape. Yes. That takes that takes a lot. It does. It looks My. like li literally you could you compare his picture to back when he was in the WWF in two thousand one. He looks almost. He the looks same. behind <laughs> the exact same. Like nothing's changed. Yeah. My favorite like, wrestler. That shape. My favorite wrestler was Edge, and and and, and when he left, left WWE, uh, because everybody everybody knew, knew that he. So, some of my friends go, "Man, how do, you, how do you feel about that, about that, about him being a traitor?" I said, "He no traitor. He went to get money, man. He went to get money." Oh, good plug. <laughs> um, Disney Plus has uh, the J Percy Jackson. Uh, Edge yeah. plays Aries. <laughs> it's amazing to watch him. If you haven't seen the series yet, go watch it because I'll be sure to do that. Some of my favorite spots with Edge, the uh, 2020 Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Returned, that crowd, they weren't expecting that. They popped like Edge. Oh, I think they're getting back tears. That like, was special. A guy that came from neck injury. And, yeah, and yeah. Just everything. And, you and, know, and I, I, you look know, at I, him now, like he's still man, doing it. it. Are you, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm like, look, man. I, I said, I said, I'm, I, I'm not like, like the rest of these crazy people out here. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna threaten his wife, threaten his kids, or nothing like that, right there. That's the man the made a decision. He, he did everything there was in WWE. He left to, to go do other things and make yeah. and make money. And he yeah, also got to that's what a wrestler. Yeah. I, I tell my friends, in case you people know, that's what wrestlers do. They go to make money. Uh -huh. They are the, professionals. The other yeah. thing with Edge that I really liked was the they called it the greatest match with him and Orton. Oh yeah, like yeah. that was that was pure chemistry. That was awesome. Oh that my was god, awesome. yes it was. Although oh I do have to disagree on something. Um, I don't think these wrestlers that are returning after severe injuries is smart. I think they're stupid and they need to stop because neck injuries and back injuries yeah. are severe and concussions are severe and they return and all they're doing it for is either the glory of it or for the, they have nothing better I, to do and they want to keep living in that moment. It's like, now, you, you know what, you know what, you know what? I I do agree with you because because that's what I said about Edge when, when he when he hurt his neck. I I said to myself, "What are you doing in that ring? Retire! It's over for you." How do you all thing, feel? You know, yeah. you you've done everything in the rest. It, it, the whole thing. That, you, yeah. that you had to do, and you did it. You did it greatly. Yeah. It, it's time to just back away from it and let it go. Be, be, the one be, thing that I did. Daddy. One thing I'll give Edge and Orton. Well, Orton never had the problem, but with Edge, I think after his injury, he at least learned how to work a little safer. Yeah. Now you get somebody like Brian Danielson, who's all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just a ticking time bomb. And when he and came I like back, Brian, I do. Great work. I like him as a person and I respect his work ethic, but I think in ring, he's you, just. You can't do what you used to do. Like, you're. Yeah. you're and then when he got married, and then he's still putting his health at risk, like he doesn't seem to be working much safer. I, like I think, I I think it's time for a wrestler when they're when they're you know when they reach a certain age, you, you know I, I think it's time for, you know for, for them to think about you know, well, uh, you know my age and everything, I could get hurt worse than than than, than what I was, you know, and, and I. I I always felt felt like you know it, it, it's time you know that if you've done everything that, that that you that you've done in your career, and and, and did it very well, I, I think it's time you know. And I know it's hard for these guys to walk away because that's all they've ever known. I, they, I know it's hard, they but, but there comes a time when you have to go. If they really want to keep keep going with the ring and everything, they could turn them into managers. Since yes. there's no managers anymore, really. They could turn yeah. and still give them their paycheck. They can still take a bump every now and then. Exactly. You know, if exactly. they want to. What was it? Um, MVP with the Hurt Business or something yeah. like that? That yeah. was that was gold. I liked that. Yeah. I've got a question for you all real quick. And yeah. uh, What's your thoughts of, uh, of a Ric Flair and a Sting being in the ring at their age? No. No. Uh, we, 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 we all watched, agree uh, to that. 
yeah, we watched a Ric Flair's thing the other day, and I just was that horrible. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> thought it was going to be entertaining because I liked the one that came out in 08, the WWE mm -hmm. produced one. And then by the time I was done watching the one on, you're talking about the one on Peacock, right? The newest one. Uh, where he had his last match, Ric oh. Flair's last match. Did you see oh. that? I didn't see the match, but like I, I saw parts of it, and I just was so pissed off watching it because I'm like, neither one of you should be in this ring. Neither yeah. one of you yeah. have that ability anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, let it be. And you yeah. see how yeah. horrible yeah. he looks. Exactly, He's that's way up here. Exactly, sure. that's what I feel about it. I was telling Jess, like, with everything that Flair's been through with his divorces and losing his son, like. Rick Flair, the character, is his defense mechanism. Because mm -hmm. if he's not Rick Flair, Richard Fleer's been through way too much. Yeah. And well, Richard Fleer has yet to actually deal with his problems. Yeah. And that's, that's where the issue is. And that's it's, it's easier to be Rick Flair than it is you know, to be Rick Flair. You know, what do you think of Sting's last match? Him t taking on the young bucks. <laughs> yeah. That I did. Yeah. <laughs> has that already happened? I don't know. It's I haven't gonna happen. it, it's it's gonna happen. happen. Stay out of the ring. I, say, I think I love you. stay out of the ring. I never watched Sting a whole lot just because I was a WWE guy more than WCW, but yeah. Yeah. like he always had my respect. And I liked yeah. Sting growing up, but I I think even like and I hate to say it, even with like Undertaker's last match, yeah. I'm like, you guys need to stop going in this ring. That match yeah. with him and Goldberg was exactly. horrible. Yeah. Remember that one with him and Roman? I think it was oh, wrestling. That was horrible too. Oh that goodness. was horrible too. And I felt really bad. And like uh, I know yeah, you got but... caught on your big match, but your big match was 20 years ago. And that's saying something. Well, I think yeah. they kind of saved Taker a little bit with that boneyard match. Yes, yeah. that was a great match. Because that was fun. That was an amazing yeah. match. That AJ, match AJ Styles bumped for the Undertaker perfectly. He was yes. the butt man. He did all the work. Whoops. Let the Undertaker do less. Let him do less, and I'll do more. Yes. I love it was the finish, too. Like, AJ was begging, don't bury me, don't bury me. And mm -hmm. Taker looks like he's going to walk away. Then he just kicks him or whatever. And, and then, then uh, at the end of the match, you see AJ's glove coming through the dirt. And yes. it's like, they did it. I like that spot. Yes. It made, a it made the Undertaker look perfect. He yep. didn't do too much. He and didn't less. Why AJ did more, which was the right way to do it. Yeah, and then yeah. showed that and, AJ and, and, and he, and he, he, he didn't get hurt. He didn't get hurt, yeah. and now that's what I like too. He didn't get hurt at all it, it, because and, AJ was do, was taking all the bumps. And it AJ was, put Undertaker over because yep. you know he is more experienced and, then, and everything. Exactly, and, Alex and Anderson were helping too. And he, yeah. uh, but he still was able to show like, hey, yeah, I can pop through. I can continue the future without Undertaker knowing type of a thing. You know, that told a story. Yeah, yeah it did. Yeah. And it, it still put people over that it was supposed to. We Exactly. But exactly. When Angie was born, I made the mistake of watching wrestling with her almost every day. Her favorite wrestler was Undertaker. Whenever he came on TV, she would throw kicks and punches. That was the only <laughs> one she would, like, get active and excited for and, and watch. We wrestling. watched the Boneyard match quite a few times together. I think she really liked it. Yeah. <laughs> then, I don't know. It might have been her mom. Somebody got on to me. She was like, you can't be watching wrestling so much with her. I'm like, fine. <laughs> she, we were watching last year's WrestleMania together. It was just me and Angie. And when they had one of the women's matches on, like, her eyes were huge. She, they were glued to the TV, and she was laughing. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, I got it once. Right. Yeah, she she feels it. Yeah. I don't think either of us want the kids in the business, <laughs> but it's in their blood. Have you have you heard uh, about uh, about uh, uh, Nick Foley? What what, what he, he wants to be last in a, match a to be? Death match. Yeah, he, he wants a death match. His last match, he wants a death match. Match. Oh gosh. Yes. <sighs> And, and Nick, the poor Nick man, I, I love him dearly. I love him dearly, but the poor man can hardly get around. And you want a death match? Come Charlie on, bro. Charlie wants a death match so he can be put out of his misery. Like you can't do that. Stuff God, anymore. man. Like stop. Like that's the one thing I don't like about older guys that are in their fifties or even sixties. Why are you getting in the ring? Just, just do. If you want to be involved in wrestling, 
How about you just do meet and greets? You can make money that way. Yeah. Sign autographs. Taker's, like Taker's going around doing like like comedy shows almost where he yeah. just tells stories and yeah. I'm making bank because those tickets yeah. are expensive. You can do yeah. meet and greets. But, you can do – there's uh, indie places that would take you on for mm – -hmm. For like storytelling purposes to like develop their matches and stuff like that like you don't even have to all you have to do is show up you can do ring announcement you can manage you can go work if you still want to work with the wwe or whatever you can be there That's in the back the you know better in telling them how to do it as a trainer telling them how to do it or what to do to make it better and stuff like that you know, I can understand. It, 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 I mean, it, it, these guys that, that we're talking about, it, it, it's all they knew in their whole life. It, 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 it's, it, it's all they knew. It, 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 it was their literally bread and butter. That's how they made their living. It but when there comes a time where you just have to say, hey, my body can't take this no more. It's time to go. It is. And it's like the best and the ones that make the best money off of it and everything have investments elsewhere to be mm -hmm. able to do other things. And yeah. they don't put all of their eggs in one basket. Yeah. So they have something to fall back on. Exactly. And they get injured or hurt or need to retire. Exactly. And, and, and that's exactly, I, I feel the same way you did. That's exactly what they should do. It, 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 it put, you know, if, if you start young in the business, you, 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 your, your age, you know, and the older you get, put, put something, but make something that, that, that you know that, that after you leave wrestling, hey, I, I got this. I got this to rely on. I have heard that's something that the company's gotten very good about, like WWE, is they've really tried to get financial planning for a lot of these guys. Yeah. Like I know Seth Rollins owns, I think, a, a wrestling school and a coffee shop. And mm -hmm. I don't know what other businesses, but like they really try to push, like this isn't going to last forever. Try to be smart with your money yeah. now. So, and to me, that's, save your money. Yeah. That's Definitely save your money. Yep. Like, that's the main thing. Well, we don't want to keep you guys on for too we're much. We're talking to y'all's head off. Of, but <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 it's been fun. We're, we're, we we're, talk, we're we love fun. talking wrestling and having fans who actually appreciate what we did and who yes. actually noticed that we were gone. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're, well, you know, we, 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 we're so sorry that we're bending your year so much because we, we're just so. Yeah, you guys don't have anything to apologize for. It's been fun. We we we, we just we. We were so excited to, to know that you guys was going to be on to talk about talk about this. I, I mean, we just couldn't wait to get it for, gonna, the, for, the, for the day to come that we could talk to you guys. I'm going to be honest. I was a little bit scared. I was like, I don't know if they'll accept it or not, but I'll try. <laughs> yeah, and the other thing, uh, Tommy, I noticed that you've been uh, taking care of your health and exercising more, man. And yes. we're real, I commend you for that. I'm trying to do the same thing, too. Yes. Staying That's in the gym. Like in 2018, like I said, I had I was I was type two diabetic. I didn't even know it at the time. And then, like a year after, I had my heart attack, and I didn't even know about it. And then, and then in 2022, my my doctor goes, "I think you're trying to lose weight, but I think we need to give you a tool." I was like, "Okay." And she goes, "I recommend you do weight loss surgery." I was like, "Okay, no problem." And ever since this weight loss surgery, like I'm down to a hundred, almost a hundred pounds now. So awesome! Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, I remember seeing you at the shows too. Like you were one of the few fans that actually appreciated me as the ref that wanted a picture. I remember. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, hey, hey, can you get this guy? I want a picture. I'm like, you want a picture with me? <laughs> and they're like, no, not you. I'm like, okay. Uh, I wanted a picture with. Yeah, so we were we were both excited. I know we our only thing was like we were worried that we'd been out of the business too long, but we still talk no, about it. All the time. We not at all. We had like, you were worried about that. I was like, it don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter. <laughs> Just on here to talk about your guys's experience and uh, and uh, we appreciate your guys's time. Yeah, we really we really appreciate y'all coming on the podcast and and answering the questions and and everything and being a part of this. We really. It's something we wanted to do for a long time, so I'm uh, glad that y'all were able to do this. Uh, one yeah. last question before we do go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any uh, 
Uh, any thought about maybe getting back into wrestling? I've thought about it like a lot. Um, I've thought about, I've actually, other than the kids, when I get opportunities, I get back into the gym and every time I'm in the gym, I think about it and trying to find a local place here and resubmitting um, applications for refing and wrestling and stuff to like WWE and whatnot, but my oh, age is getting up there. <laughs> I know. I was told you know, I think I know past a certain age, WWE won't look at you anymore. So I think we're both past that. I, when I'm in the gym, I feel like I can still, I still have something to offer and it chips away at me and she'll tell you that too. Um, we were, I took our daughter to the park maybe a few months ago and I didn't know anything about it, but we were walking by the basketball pavilion. There was a wrestling ring. There was a free show going on and I saw the ref get in the ring and he had a cutoff shirt and blue jeans and it was terrible. And, and I'm not going to say anything about the talent in the ring either, but I was just like chomping at the bit. Like, oh my gosh, this, this is, can you hear that? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> See, that's, oh, that's, hey, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> hey, like Cornette would call those. As Cornette would call those type shows, and that law mud show. That's what he would call it. That's yeah. a Zechariah. That's Z. <laughs> every day is an adventure at our house. Yes, it that's is. Damn sure. Very much so. I wrestle every know. day with this little <laughs> here. You guys, you know, yeah. I, I got to say this, you know, b b before we do get off here, uh, you guys are credit to the wrestling organizations that, that you did that you guys did did do so well at Thank and you. Uh, god i wish and and i'm I, and i'm glad to call y'all our friends here on the podcast we really appreciated y'all coming on really thank you for having us we were like i said we were so excited you know with well are, are, will, will they do it or, or i mean I hope to God they do because there's a lot of questions that I, that I would like to ask myself just to, just just to just to get you know their, their input on, on how how it all went in OVW. Mm -hmm. Do you all have any other questions? I, feel like all, I, right, I got one. I got one more question. Okay. If some other time, would you all like to be a guest on the WR podcast again sometime? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, he, Maybe yeah. protect him because I don't answer texts or messages very well. Or maybe I will ignore people for days and weeks at a time, and it's not on purpose, it's just I forget about it and then I get distracted like by that. <laughs> I, got, I, I got a question, I got one more question for you. One more question. What's your last question? Hey. Uh, my, my last question hey. so, I, I, you, 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 you said that you, that you guys met each other. At a wrestling at, 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 at OVW, right? That's correct. She was in the beginners class, and I introduced myself to her and the rest of the class. And then I refed her first match, and I counted the pin when she won the title. And then, and then, you guys just connected. That, yeah, that's the thing. That's, that's, that, 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 that to me that is, is, is like, a wrestling love story, okay? That I'm is like a wrestling right, love, a wrestling love story, yeah. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's we, his favorite story to tell him uh, is how we met and everything. <laughs> like he, he always tells everybody he can when they yeah, ask. His eyes he, light he, up and everything. Like, oh my gosh, let me tell you. <laughs> I still show friends and coworkers the picture he, of her. He with shows the championship. talks about me being the champion more than I do. <laughs> and all this stuff. That should just, be your just that should be your great highlight, and it is. You should be happy about it. I am very proud yeah. of it, and I am very you happy for it. You, you, I mean, hey, you, 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 you should hey, be you happy should about be happy it because, because, because you <laughs> held that title uh, along with, uh, with, with with other with, with along with, with other uh, 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 stars that did that, that already went to to, uh, to WWE that held that title. Oh yeah. Right. I'm, it's one of you my should proud be, you moments. Should be very proud. I, I, I am very proud of it. It's just I've also had a lot of different proud moments in my life too, and I've accomplished so much in my life 
but he has the picture. He shows everybody off my all my pictures. I'm just like, do I even have that picture? <laughs> it's on the, the OVW like, page. I took it, 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 you know, here's the thing. You see, he loves you and he's so proud of you, you know, as he should be. <laughs> he he is. We took the bill up to Minnesota um after I got it. Um to show my family like they didn't believe me that i was a champion and so we took it up to my family for that weekend um my best friend's husband had passed and we were up there for the funeral and so i showed all of them, we stayed with family showed them all the bell everything and they wanted to keep it <laughs> they really did. like oh my god this is real <laughs> Your name is in the history books of other great OVW women. Exactly. You should exactly. be happy about that. Yes, I am. I am very exactly. happy and very proud. It's just so funny that that's the first thing he mentions is that, it, you know, to people like, hey, just random people on the street and stuff. People are like, hey, did you know she's a women's champion? Um, well, not, random, like, not really? random people, but oh, like, yeah. like, he, he, he is. like, hey, what does your wife do? Or like, how did you meet your wife? Like, well, that's the story. He, yeah. He loves you and he's proud and he's proud of you as, as he should be. He is. And I love you too. It's, it's just so funny. I, I find it funny that he brags about it more than me. <laughs> and like we said, he won the belt, not me. <laughs> Like we said, we really appreciate y'all being on the WR podcast. Yeah, we're no really friend. happy that y'all were able to do this for us. Maybe uh well. maybe next time next time we do the show, we'll bring Z on for a little bit so he can say hey. Because I, yeah, there, I I there you go. There you go. I know a few fans saw the picture when he was born, but he's <laughs> he's growing up too fast. Like so, <laughs> so uh if if you were like uh would you like people to know who you are like that's the thing like we want to get people that that are very knowledgeable of wrestling and oh, y'all are yeah. very knowledgeable hang on we got on hi hey hey to me you i saw <laughs> the planets <laughs> he's really into outer space right now so he watches like space videos and stuff on youtube yeah that's great that's it's awesome and silly. So do I. I like what they show too. <laughs> right. But uh, uh, thank you guys for being on the podcast. We really don't want to keep you. December. <laughs> he loves to talk. Hey, all, all, all kids do. All kids do. <laughs> all right, go back to your show. Hey, say bye. bye. Wait, just come say bye and then go back to your show. Bye. <laughs> bye. bye. <laughs> That's awful sweet. That's awful cute. <laughs> but uh, uh, you guys have a lovely family, and, uh, and we're yeah. really happy that you came yeah. on. Absolutely. So thank you guys so much. Uh, do you guys uh, have any social media that you guys want to uh, plug or plug at all? I mean, if you don't, that's fine. I have my Facebook that I think I keep most of the OVW fans like updated on. Yeah. Every December, you can count on seeing us at the Polar Express. There you um, go. Um, there you go. I have uh, my two online businesses, which I've oh. kind of put on hold right now. Um, I'm still working them. I'm still figuring out bugs and everything. But I have a jewelry store. It's called Jam's Jewelry. And then I have a pet supply store, which is June and Mally's Pet Supply. Um, and th that email address is just June and Mally's Pet Supply dot com. Um, but I'm always adding things although like this month i've taken a little break from updating and everything but i've been doing those as well so um i can see yeah. about getting the link to you later but like <laughs> pet toys pet supplies yep and Jeez. then uh z will be selling um what we're calling cub chow it's just puppy chow well not just but it's puppy chow it's like checks mix with um, uh, peanut butter Chex calls them mud buddies. Um, where I'm from, we call it puppy chow. Yeah. Um, so we'll be so he'll be selling that soon um, as well. If anybody's in the area or anything, I can always send some. 
wherever. Yeah, we can but... see that sending some too. It's really yeah, good. It is good. Yeah, uh, uh, if, if you guys have links or whatever, you just send them on our way, and we'll definitely yeah, pop that on that for you. Absolutely. But thank you guys so much for thank being you on the podcast. So much. Thank you for having us, guys. It was, it was fun. fun. Very much. Thank you. Really fun. It was our pleasure. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. We'll talk next time. All right. You, you guys too. too. Have, have a wonderful time.